Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. This is one of our two Patreon campaigns that we run here on this channel. Uh, welcome, welcome, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Shout out to our Patreons. Because of them, we can run all sorts of one-shots and marathons here on this channel. Without them, they would not be possible. If you're more, if you're interested in more information about what you can get for being a Patreon, you can check out that link there in the chat. All the lovely people that you see on the screen here are Patreons. So we say, thank you, Patreons. We love you. Uh, if you want to see any episodes previous to this one, you can find them on our YouTube. We have all of the Wild Beyond the Witchlight as well as our Ghosts of Salt Marsh campaign on there. And if you would like to interact with this game, there are a few ways you can do so. You can redeem channel points, which you can get for free for lurking, chatting, hanging out. These are used to redeem a blessing, which is an advantage die or a reroll to the player of your choice, including myself. Or if you'd like to add an element of fate to the narrative. Every $10 guarantees a draw from the deck of many things to the player of your choice. And um, we're just going to go ahead and start. Thank you so much, Vertigo Cross, for the cards as well as Matihi. I I love that this has just turned into a form of revenge. <laughs> yep, revenge cards. What? How we, we start you. arguing revenge. in the back room about sending cards to yep, each other? Revenge. Let me just start it. It's great. You know, what you're doing is, you know, tormenting your fellow players, but also supporting TTRPGs on this channel. So it's a win-win. True. Win. True. It is. All right. Kalik, I'm going to need you to tell me when to stop four times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll do them two at a time. Uh, stop. Okay. One, two. And stop. One, two. Okay, this is cool. Oh. You drew uh, two new cards. Ooh. Ooh. You're all. You're very welcome. <gasps> uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, we have recently recalibrated our deck of many things here, so you might find that some of the effects are different now. We did it to do some balancing, as well as making things more interesting. Uh, and also, we have three new cards, two of which are now on my desk, so that's going to be fun. Uh, next, we have Ricaria. Tell me when to stop. Mm, stop. Okay. And last but not least, we have Lavelli. Tell me when to stop. Uh, give me the new card. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I'd try. Stop. Okay. Like, gotta take your shot. Is it the new card? No. <laughs> <laughs> Godfather Wraith. Okay, I mean, you got another shot. Thank you so much. Godfather Wraith, the draw from the deck of many. Lavelli, you go again. Stop. Okay. Is this a new card? No, no it's not. It's not. <laughs> all right. Wait. While I figure out what we're going to do with all these awesome cards, uh, we're going to go around and tell you who we are and a little bit about our characters. And we'll start off with Maddie. Oh, hi. I'm Matihi. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie Matihi and also on Twitch, very rarely, at Matihi. Mostly, I'm on this channel, as you see every other Wednesday, playing Ricaria, who's my tiefling druid, who also has a pet snake named Sir Lancelot. Uh, you can also find me on Emma Panada stream. I am both there uh, every other Friday, playing Kondo, who is an airbender in our Avatar Legends game. And also, you can find me every Tuesday, either running Curse of Strong or running a new drop-in um, game called Jimothy and Friends. So if you want to be in a stream very rarely occasionally when we don't have Curse of Strahd, you can hang out with us and Jimothy, who is a little baby. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> I, every time you bring Jimothy up. Jimothy. Every single time. It's I love. adorable. I yes. love, I love. Cameo. <laughs> Excellent. Timothy's gained sentience. He's alive. Yeah, he's just taking over my channel. Love it. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Vertigo Cross. Oh, we're going across. Hello, I'm Vertigo. Uh, I like to play video games and stream them when I have free time. You can either catch me on my channel uh, when I have very rarely free time, or you can find me over on Stella's on Mondays where we do goofy and... Uh, flirty stuff with video games and wednesdays here where i make everyone draw cards yes no 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 you make me draw cards 
I, I made Ricario draw a card too. Yeah. Uh, but I play Lavelli, the ex pirate that no one knows about, Monk, who just makes everyone stay better. Excellent. Thank you so much. Next, we have Zombie. Hello, I'm Jacob. I am Zombie. I am Lee. I'm any of those three names you want to call me. I'm the lore cl uh, keeper, clip master. Probably too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. I play uh, Chester Cunningham today. Uh, he is a wild magic sorcerer, sort of fun little witch hand uh, who has been at the circus for a long time, but still does not know exactly where he is or how he does things at the circus. He just knows that there's a circus here. Um, uh, yeah, so as far as uh, me goes, you can follow me uh, at uh, tw uh, twitch.com. Uh, well, yeah, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash zombiefighter89. I occasionally do stuff on there. Uh, Twitter, I'm more uh, I'm more active, especially there and in Stella's Discord, Robo's Discord, a few of the Discords. And then on Mondays, you can see me and Mr. Matthew over there. We do our little Nerd Army briefing every Monday where we talk about all kinds of nerdy news, especially weeks where we don't expect a lot of news, but then we get a lot of news. <laughs> Yeah, like this one. Yes. Um, so yeah, and then one other update. I have five G. Is that what we call it now? Five G. I've got my five G. I just got my. I just <laughs> no, got my. No, you have six G now. Is it six G now? Okay, yeah. I have six G now. Six G comes with a little bit of arm pain, but it's okay. Woo, arm pain! Yay! Bones Love really arm changed. pain. Ooh, uh, Adam, thank you so much for the draw from the deck of many Yay. zombie. Tell me when. Oh you're no. I thought we were friends. Uh, stop. Okay. Is it the new card? No, actually, <laughs> Damn. actually, suck at counting, and uh, Kayla got all three new cards. Oh, I did it, boys! I did it. <laughs> nice. I love it. So no. Good job, V. Look, I'm sure Stella only added three new good cards. Mm, we'll see about that. Uh, next, we have uh, B Street Holmes. Uh, I am uh, B Street Holmes or Matthew. Uh, pretty much anywhere you guys find me on the internet, I'm going to be B Street Holmes. Um, and as uh, Jacob mentioned, uh, he and I do a YouTube show 10 p.m. on uh, nerdy news of all sorts uh, at Knights of Nirvana. Um, and tonight, uh, I'm playing Kaelic Ilvari, a son of Decius and Kelwin Ilvari, the famous adventurers. Probably know them from the, uh, for their defeat of the Chimera of Willip. Um, and, uh, he's been training all his life to be an adventurer, and now he's out to prove that he's got what it takes. Excellent. Thank you. I have a question, Caleb. Yes. Who are your parents? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Um, can you, like, <laughs> oh, let us know? Every chance I get. Every chance. <laughs> every chance. Even bad chances. Every chance. <laughs> uh, Geek Dice will not be joining us today. Uh, he is feeling a little under the weather, so we are sending all of our love. Hope you feel better, Geek Dice. And uh, hopefully he'll be back next time. Uh, so who wants to give me a recap of what happened last time? If I get a volunteer, you get a free nat 20. People below me rewatched the bot. I'll do it. All right. I think I, think I can remember. Okay. I was um, gonna. I was gonna say I was gonna keep my mouth shut this time because I did it last oh, time. Okay. Um. Well, last time, so what we did, uh, we ran into that hall of illusions after that halfling. We had a brief talk with um, a grayish uh, person. They're like a mime, a uh, candlefoot. And then we realized that, oh, Candlefoot's the one that also broke up with Palasha or vice versa. There's some issues there. But we followed the halfling in and we saw uh, in these mirrors, uh, this is hall of random mirrors and such, um, basically versions of ourselves when we were children. And uh, Riley had a very concerning one, but kind of brushed it off. And like, I'm still wondering about it. I'm not going to ask, I don't want to pry. I think maybe like in a few days when we're better friends, but like not right now. Um, but as we kind of continued on, I remember Chester got lost, but we found the guy and uh, we told him that, hey, it's not your fault. There's like a statue outside that made like your fiance laugh a lot. So you should go back outside. Um, as apparently someone attempted to 
talk to him in the mirror. It was it was very nerve wracking, but they're okay. Um, we found Chester again. They have a new hat. I I think it has like an eyeball in it. I think was it an eyeball? I don't know. Um, went back outside, reunited the halfling with um, their partner, and they just started making out in front of us like full tongue. It was very intense. Um, we went off to go see Palasha the mermaid because we were wanting to reunite um, Candlefoot and her together. And there was a heckler in the crowd, which ended up being the Kenku Kettle Stream, who I think the Kalik caught them. I think it was. I did. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're the one who got it. And uh, a few of us went after uh, Labelli and I went after uh, Palasha as they swam away. Chester back tried up. to come with. Yes, Chester tried to come with, but almost drowned. And then Labelli just yeeted them onto the shore. And I don't know if Chester's okay. I think their ego's a little bit bruised, but that, that, they seem fine. He seems fine. Uh, we ended up finding out that Palash is really shallow and I had a crush on them first, but not anymore. Um, turns out that they're really all about the voice and they have to have words of affirmation, but they're not fine with writing it down. And that's a red flag in my book. <laughs> um, so we ended up getting the voice back from the Kenku uh, as the Kenku had a kettle stream had Candlefoot's voice, I think around their neck. Um, I think that's how they were talking, like so well in one voice, I think because they like took it from them. Um, ended up giving it back. I, I did something, a little, little magic. Um, might have been the best thing, but I did it anyway and it worked. Uh, so they gave it back. Um, Candlefoot was able to profess their love to Palasha and they went off and also made out just like the halflings, very wet, very awkward. Uh, we ended up leaving um, with Kettle Stream in tow. A few of us went to the snail races. Riley ended up winning, um, but they were the, the they were fighting against Lavelli, and the two of them were having a huge spat. And I thought I was going to win, but it turns out I'm not that good at it. But it's okay because I have now a Minotaur friend named Fine, and he's very handsome and tall, and can pick me up, and it's and it's great. Um, but uh, Kalik ended up losing kettle stream something happened and they ran off so Kalik ran off ahead and has been going into the back room inside the big top and trying to find things and has dressed up in stilts and a big coat and is pretending i think to be one of the people there uh while everyone else we're kind of out we're sitting around waiting for the show to start um and i think it was labelli who took a halfling who was in a box and tossed it at a goblin they started juggling it was really fantastic um, but that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Excellent. That is absolutely where we are. Do a little bit of music change here. <gasps> Show some art. All right. Uh, zoom. Large. Okay, so as we bring the camera back into focus, we see in the interior of the big top, the roof of this tent reaches towards the night sky in three swooping peaks topped with spinning gold stars. Painted wooden panels on the tent walls whirl with colorful motion, displaying vibrant circus performances. The sound of music and laughter drifts out through the canvas door. And we see now this large silver hoop is being descended from the ceiling by silk ropes. And in it is Mr. Light, the one of the owners of the Witchlight Carnival. As you behold him, this individual very flamboyantly and garishly dressed, he addresses the entire tent in a grand sweep of his arm welcome one and all to this evening's extravaganza i am mr light prepare to be delighted you see all at once there are a number of different performances that begin to burst into light and sound and action all around you you see that there are little fairy dragons Woozing, whooshing around above your head, right out of your grasp, and there are little streamers trailing after them. You see brilliant colors of bubbles just bloop, 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 
popping in all directions, fireflies blinking in and out of vision. And over the course of the next hour, you'll see that there are a number of different performers that begin to make their way towards this empty clearing in the center of the big top. First, you see Burly, the bugbear. Picture, I love just throwing these pictures at you. Look at this picture. Call him Burly because his mind is so big. Yes, absolutely. 100%. You see Burly performing feats of strength, picking up various large creatures. You see that he's picking up a camel with one hand. You see that he's picking up some kind of strange structure with another. And he also wheels out that clamshell bathing pool that you have seen housing Palasha the mermaid. And as this is all going around you, you can see that Candlefoot has joined the audience and he walks up to where you are all seated and he lifts up a hand as if to ask you for something, Ricaria. <sighs> and Ricaria thinks for a moment, doesn't really know and extends their hand towards him. You see... Candlefoot doesn't exactly take your hand, but they, they hover theirs around yours, and they go one moment with their finger. They don't speak. They, just, they only speak in gestures. They reach into an invisible pouch, rummage around. You see them throwing invisible things over their shoulder. They go, aha! Pull out a ring of some kind. You see them kind of gesturing a circular motion, and they hold it out to you. Bell, Rikari extends their two fingers and will take the ring uh, out of their hand um, and like pretend to look at it and be like, ooh, ah, and they'll put it on one of their fingers or mime putting it on one of their fingers. Excellent. Yes, you pick up nothing, you put on nothing. And then Candlefoot slowly lurks over to Chester and you see them reaching back into their bag, throwing a few things around and they pull out a ball invisible ball and they throw it at you Chester catches it yeah you catch nothing I got the ball you see Candlefoot just clapping soundlessly and people that are seated around you begin to roar and cheer and as Candlefoot looks over to you Lavelli they put up a finger one moment they reach into their bag they seem to pick out a small something. You see them climb down off of the benches and begin to mimic digging into the dirt of this platform here. They plant something, cover it up. Look like they're pouring something. Look like they're waiting for time. They reach down, pluck, and present something to you, completely invisible. Uh, Lavelli will reach out and pinch the, uh, something between two talons and hold it up to her beat. Yeah, so, um, as you are kind of miming, smelling a flower, you see Candlefoot just look extremely ecstatic and reaches into their pocket, throws invisible confetti all around you, and then begins to stalk off to play with others. You don't get hit by anything. There's no confetti. Yay, thick confetti. Yay. It's in my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> We're LARPing right now. Uh, so as all of this is going on, Kalik is not with the party. Surprise. Can you right. give us a little reminder of where Kalik is right now? Uh, so Kalik is worried about Cattle Stream, who ran off and had been talking about stealing something of importance from Mr. Witch and Mr. Light as a way of trying to get them to do what he wanted, which I don't believe is a good idea. <laughs> uh, so I snuck into sort of this back um, uh, appendix tent to the, uh, to the big top uh, where the ax were getting ready hoping I could find him there and cut him off before he'd reached the masters of the of the carnival. 
Um, just as we ended last time, he'd gotten a coat with a hundred handkerchiefs tied together in the pocket, uh, a dagger, uh, and with a, question uh, a mark. pair yep. of long purple uh, pants and stilts to go under them. Yes. So these stilts are going to be about like three, no, they'll be four feet long each. Okay. So they're not going to be very easy. So you can use it like as a quarter staff if you like, but it's not going to be very easy to hide. Oh, no, no, he's he's on them. <laughs> okay. So as Kayla kind of exits out of the back tent here, that was more or less a dressing room. You're the only one in there. Uh, you are wearing the stilts. Are you wearing also the vest? Yeah. Oh, he's in full costume. Okay. Gone in badly. <laughs> you would have seen makeup in there as well. Would you have gone in and used the makeup too? Uh, you know what? Sure. Okay. Okay. So what do uh, you do now as you are in full costume? Um, I'm actually gonna. So I guess I, I guess when I come out, I can see Mr. Light is like out in the open. He's still suspended in the air. Yes, you can see that he is holding this sort of scepter-like thing, and he is pointing it towards various people in the crowd. And you can see that there are little streams of light that wisp out of it. You see a golden butterfly just twinkle and just kind of psh, disappear. Okay, so he's probably not going to get anything stolen off of him. I mean, he's he's airborne and he's very visible to a large crowd of people. So I'm not worried about that. About uh, about Mr. Light. But I think I might, like, sneak behind where some or under some of these stands and see if I can uh, find either Kettle Stream or uh, Mr. Light. Mr. Witch? Mr. Mr. Witch. Yeah. Uh, um, so I'm just, just going to go like, ahead and give this to you. Yeah. Um, so where you are now, four feet additionally up off of the ground... You can definitely pick out Mr. Witch. You see Mr. Witch is over by the entrance. And as you look at him very closely, perhaps for the first time, you see a very well-dressed individual. You see that they make no point of trying to hide the golden pocket watch that's in their hand. They open it up and look at it quite a pensive look on their face and they close it adjust their weight on their cane and they look around so they seem to be kind of alone off to the side presently yeah i'm i'm gonna as much as i can without like going through the middle of the circus where all the acts are mm -hmm. i'm gonna make my a beeline for him okay excellent uh, so I'll say that at this point, um, so as you kind of pass by a number of spectators, they are clapping and wooing at you, Kalik. They seem to think that you're part of this show here. Can I get either an acrobatics or an athletics check from you? That, that will 100% be acrobatics. You don't want to see me attempt it. <laughs> okay. With an 11, you absolutely manage to make your way through uh, or around on these stilts. It definitely feels a little uncomfortable. You're not used to it whatsoever. But I think you have a pretty solid sense of balance just naturally from what you do and your training. So you manage to... Adapt to this, no problem. So you'd say his performance is a little stilted. <laughs> Only for a little bit. Only for a little bit. It def You definitely find your legs after a minute or so. It's a tall order. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Uh, so as you're moving around, we see the axe beginning to shift slowly. We see that there are um, there are a number of acrobats flying through the air, performing synchronized and dazzling acts here. You can see that there are clowns kind of romping around in little groups, performing. You see that there are a number of fire breathers about as well. It seems that the entire 
energy of the carnival is in high spirits. What do we see now as we look over to Ricaria, Lavelli, and Chester? I think as we're kind of sitting there enjoying it and Ricaria is like clapping along and watching, um, who's sitting directly beside Ricaria? Fine. Uh, we will say yeah. that it is fine. This very burly, very um, shirtless. Did we say that they were shirtless? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. the shirtless minotaur. Uh, as fine looks down at you. Uh, tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> Thank you to Emma for this card. Thanks, Emma. Okay. Thanks, Emma. <laughs> Emma. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So you look up to fine. Hi. I I was gonna say something that I kind of forgot. Um, your really nice eyes. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, and they their cheeks heat up a little bit. But they like lean over, uh, fine to look over at Lavelli and Chester, and uh, she says, "I'm like I'm really enjoying this, and this is great, and everything." Mm -hmm. Where's Kalik? I thought he was like I don't see him in the crowd. It's hard. And they like peek up, and she's trying to find and spot Kalik at this point. Uh. Well, Veli will also scan the crowd looking for Kalik or Kettlestream. Okay, I'm going to need a deception check at advantage from Kalik, and then a perception check from anyone who's looking around. Alright, that's a 12 from Kalik, a 15 from Chester, an 8 from Ricaria, and a 9 that's, from. Wait, that's, that's persuasion. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, a ten. Persuade your eyes. All right. So we got an eight, a nine, and a ten. All right. You don't find Kalik. Somehow, yeah. ten foot tall Kalik doesn't get spotted. Well, yeah. You're but you're out. in a disguise. I am in a disguise, but still, like, <laughs> okay. Chester, as you're looking around, tell no. me when to stop. I don't want to. Adam, thank you so much for the card to uh, zombie. Adam, what the? <laughs> Uh, Good work, Adam. stop. Okay. If any of these are bad cards, I'm s you're still my friend, but. Stella, how many more cards could we give to Zombie? No. Uh... <laughs> Adam, it's fine. You spent your money today. No. <laughs> I have 10 cards on my desk. There's 10 in the deck. <gasps> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so none of you can find Kalik as you're looking around. Fine kind of leans down towards you, Ricaria. As he kind of leans in close, you can feel the heat coming off of his fur. He smells like sandalwood and nutmeg. Well, we know why Rick didn't spot me. <laughs> I'm distracted. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, the valley is busy trying to tie the invisible flower around her medallion. <laughs> Fine says to you. Which act do you like the best so far? Oh my goodness, everything's just like really overwhelming right now. I I, I really like what Candlefoot did with, with like going around. It's very personal. I, I like that. I like the personal touch. Ah, yes. You seem to have had a knack of performing yourself. Oh. You have a background in the arts. Um... Not, not I mean, kind of. Actually, you know what? I kind of do. And like, Ricaria goes from like being really embarrassed, like around fine, and like immediately just like, you're asking me about my theories. I have so many theories. Like, pulls out their books of like their little monster manuals. Like, let me show you everything. And starts flipping through. And like, and this, this is what my dad told me. I've never seen one before, but it's like, it's like a beholder or something. And it's just like, just a round ball with like multiple eyes on it. They have no idea what it looks like uh -huh. and like i just drew it from memory i don't know let's start and just start like starts talking finds ear off about their special interest okay of drawing go ahead and roll me just a straight charisma check oh i'd, I'd love to let's see if this comes <laughs> off awkward or okay cool it's 17 smooth. it is pretty smooth so you manage to share you manage to info dump 
on this <laughs> basically really hot stranger. And uh, they actually seem to be quite interested. They ask questions and they say, do you mind if I take it and have a closer look? No problem. I have multiple volumes. They all are alphabetically ordered. Feel free. Uh, I, thank you. And they seem to like, you know, really take the time and they're actually seeming to be more focused on you than what's going on around you. There's literally like fire being breathed and just- <laughs> Yeah, same. Yeah. <laughs> With Rick just like interested now in talking about their books. Excellent. Uh, uh Chess, sorry, go ahead. Lavelli? Uh, as Ricaria starts like going on on all these stories, Lavelli starts to zone out and just leans back and stares up at the ceiling of the tent. Yeah, as you're zoning out, Hold on, this music's driving me nuts. <laughs> Is that <laughs> As you're kind of zoning out, Lavelli, the music fades a little, and you find your thoughts wandering elsewhere. What are you thinking about right now? She's thinking back to uh, when she had snuck in as a little kid. Okay. As you are pondering over this, Hold on, let me try to find your card among the... All right. <laughs> As you're pondering over this, perhaps it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. It could be a sense of unburdening, a sense of moving on. But you have drawn the Fool card and you lose something. This can be a bond, a sense, a memory. It doesn't have to be tangible. And it doesn't have to be something major. But something loses its hold on you, or you lose your hold on it. I think when she starts thinking back towards the circus, it leads to some of her older memories. And I think she loses grasp on the memory of her first adventure she had with her brother where she took him into some of the nearby caves on our island. Okay. That strong, unshakable foundation, one of those first memories, begins to slowly slip away as the din of the circus begins to rise and slide back in. And she just blinks and shakes her head and that was weird. <laughs> Goes back to looking at the show. Okay. As you do, Kalik. What would you like to do now? We'll say that you are pretty much like fifteen feet away from Mr. Witch. Are you counting the stilts? No. <laughs> fifteen normal feet. So you could bound over there very quickly if you wanted. So Knowing at the end of two weeks ago that I had stilts, I went and looked up videos of how to get off of stilts because I realized I, as a player, have no idea how one does that. What the fuck? I, as a DM, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so he is gonna he is gonna try and make this graceful, and then we'll see what the rolls whether or not that works out for him. Okay. Um, as as he gets close enough to to Mister Witch that. He's not like shouting to him. Um, and I assume as as tall as he is, Mr. Witch has noticed that he's he's approaching. Um he's going to say Mr. Witch, I take it. Uh with sort of a, a head bow, because you cannot bow on stilts. <laughs> okay. Um and I I this was one of the ways that I that was the prettiest, but I feel like he could fall over easily, so it'll be fun. Okay. With you take a, a fairly large step so that the, the bottom of the stilts are, are far apart, and then you twist your body. And if it works out right, you basically land uh, legs crossed Indian style on the floor in a like a sitting position. It could be beautiful, or he could fall down. <laughs> or you could break your ankles. All right. Or break roll my me, ankles. Roll me right. acrobatics Yay. here. 
Uh, just don't roll a one. Nope. Oh, nope. a one. Don't roll a one. <laughs> don't roll a oh a one. Rest in peace, ankles. <laughs> All right, tell me how you fail this. You don't have to actually break your ankles, but if you want to, you can. You can <laughs> you flavor this it. however yeah. you want. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that uh, when he goes to twist, he leans a little bit. And he actually ends up falling against like the wall of the tent. So he's like holding onto the tent in order to keep himself from actually like just completely collapsing. Yeah. And as you are like introducing yourself like this, getting his attention, Mr. Witch hasn't said a single thing and is just watching you. Noticeable is what's going on with like Stilts Man. Yeah, you all see it. Everyone oh, yeah. sees it. <laughs> So anyone that looks over can probably recognize, oh, hey, that's Kalik. <laughs> what is he doing um, over there? The belly smiles a bit. I, I, I assume I still can find some sort of scramble to the ground. Absolutely. It's not <laughs> graceful. It's really, no. really awkward. Oh, no. Yeah, it's embarrassing. From... It... You're just slowly like climbing down as your knees bend. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. This is um as he as he reaches this like sitting position and it's just the most undignified like I've given up seat. Uh he tries to recover sir uh, and gives like a better better bow. <laughs> um it's my understanding that you have a um miscreant here at the carnival tonight, causing a bit of a hubbub. We do. He says to you very seriously. My associates and I had encountered uh, your uh, ne'er-do-well. Uh, a uh, Miss uh, Kettlestream um she did happen to elude us uh, and is back free at the carnival, but uh, before she did, before she uh, escaped our grasp, she mentioned that she was interested in an audience with yourself and with Mr. Light. Uh, I thought I might warn you. She believes that if she can steal something of importance off your person, or perhaps from an office or, or personal tent of yours, that she'll have the leverage to make you listen to her and help her as she needs. Um, if, since we weren't able to place her in, her in your custody, so to speak, it seemed the next best option was to give you a warning. As you say this, you see his hand immediately begin to white knuckle as he grips the pocket watch harder. You see him put it into his pocket and his hand remains in there, securing it away. And he looks at you and you see his eyes squint a bit as you speak. And as you finish, he says, Yes, Kettle Stream has been a bit of an inconvenience and a nuisance. However... We have been unable thus far to remove them from the carnival. You have done well to share this with me. However, we did not learn anything new of it. Well, uh, still best to help as I can. Uh, as they say, forewarned is forearmed. Hmm. You see him kind of, like, look over at the stilts. <laughs> Are you a performer? I don't remember seeing you on the books. I I'm not. I... <laughs> I I'd hoped that I'd not attract quite so much attention if I approached appearing as a member of the uh, employ. Hmm. Well... If you fancy, I'm certain that the main event will start soon. And you can, if you like, 
join in and participate. As an act within the show. Right. I think I could be game for that. If you have others to join you, that is also permitted. As I said, I am here with some associates. I, I'll ask if they're interested in joining. Hmm. Thank you for your warning. I think it's probably best if my act is not uh, these. And he kind of half-heartedly kicks his little his little stilt legs. <laughs> yeah, and you see Mr. Witch kind of take half a step back and he goes, hmm. And he just begins to walk off. Not the personality I expected. <laughs> so you're Meanwhile, on your butt? Meanwhile, the three of us just staring yeah. at him in the distance. It's, yeah. It's, it's like, um, it's like just on his butt with just his leg straight out in front of him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the three of you see this at a distance. Kalik is on their ass. What do you want to do? Um, <clears throat> Hikaria, does he do this a lot? Huh? And they, like, close one of the books and they're like, <laughs> what? And I point over to where uh, Kalik is. Oh! Oh, um, not, I mean, they said not like that. Hmm. Okay. Perhaps we should go towards him. I don't know if he'll be able to get back up on his own. You're right. You should, we should probably go help him. I suppose it's the best thing we can do, yeah. Okay. And they close their books and put them away and brush off their dress as they stand And there. gently touch Fine's ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need consent. Uh, Fine kind of scoots over to the middle of where you were sitting and says, I will hold your seat. And they kind of flex a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Hold, hold those seats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like watches... A few moments too long, fine, before turning around and walking towards Kalik. Excellent. All right. Uh, so the group of you approach Kalik. You see them coming, Kalik. I, I imagine as you guys approach, Kalik is like bunching up the pants on this to try and like be able to even reach the part where it's strapped to him. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, do you mind uh, giving a hand? Are you trying to get our attention? Because it worked. Uh, well, I, I did need to regroup with you at some point, though I'd certainly hope not to make quite such a scene of myself. Uh, here, let me help you up. <laughs> and I'll extend a hand towards Kalik to help them up. Okay. So, uh, Kalik, do you take Ricaria's hand? Sure. All right. You explode. Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> she spread the pixie curse on you. The stilts are gone. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. As the two of you hold hands and you're kind of helped up, we see the scene kind of fade to black around them. We still see the two of them here joined as we have a little flashback here you have a little moment of reflection introspection you have drawn the uriel card medusa mm -hmm. card Ooh. okay uh so here we're going to explore a little bit of your backstory so as you are given this gesture of support of help calic what comes to your mind as a moment that you've shared with Vicaria in the past. Ooh. Um, so our time prior to this had been a lot of uh, exploring the woods near her home. Um, and this moment of her helping him stand back up, I think, uh, was a reminder to him it's like just triggered this this memory of him of uh when they'd been basically playing tag running through the woods and and he had tripped over a log um and it stuck out to him as a moment because 
uh, by the time they had met, Caleb's brother had already started his adventuring and his parents were very tough and like, you know, people aren't going to help you up, you know, when you're, when you're out there on the road, you got to rely on yourself. And it struck him like, maybe that's not true. Like maybe with the right party, they will support you and they will, you know, help you when you fall. Um, and so it was that, that moment of like, I guess when he decided like, I would, I would like to adventure with Ricaria. I love that. So we just have this brief vision, this summery afternoon of a much younger version of yourselves. And Ricaria helps you up. Ricaria, as you look to Kalik, there's a bit of a wistful look in their eye as they recall this. You don't know what they're thinking, but there's something fond there. Something sweet. And there's circus music around you. Well, um... All good now? Yes, well, thank you. Hey, you're welcome. You're really tall now. <laughs> like, look up at Kay, like... So, uh... Sorry to, uh, I, sh I should catch you all up. Um, during the, the snail racing, uh, Kettle Stream uh, took off. Um, she'd mentioned something about uh, trying to get something of importance from Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Uh, I, I thought since we had already mentioned to her that this was the best opportunity to find an audience perhaps she'd come here looking for for a chance to get close to them um i i, I took off in this direction at least to to uh warn the masses of the situation which i have though uh, uh honestly uh, mr witch seemed already familiar with the uh with the plot very protective of his pocket watch, that one. Kalik, as you say this, roll me a perception check. Uh, perception. 21, very good. So as you're kind of telling this to the party, I imagine that your eyes are trying to find Mr. Witch because you're talking about him. And you can mm -hmm. see that on the other side of the tent, closer to the back area, you see that Mr. Light has come down and the two of them are leaning together and speaking. Obviously can't hear them. They're looking towards the group of you. Um, they also mentioned, uh, despite my lack of grace, uh, that as the festivities begin here in the Big Top, if we'd like to join the acts, we'd be welcome. Oh, hmm. Chester, you already work here. <laughs> Chester, that's perfect. Chester, you work here, which means that you have insider information on how to be a good performer. You can teach us. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Chester, oh. Chester, you mm -hmm. know that the end of the show here at the Big Top Extravaganza, mm -hmm. Mr. Light will ask guests to perform acts of their own. Mm -hmm. And if you manage to woo the spectators, then it's very likely that you'll get special favor from them. Mm -hmm. So the goal here is to not impress them, impress the crowd. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so that's 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 basically the spew. Um, <laughs> I've been able to do it close at one point. Um, I can't quite remember if I won. I feel like I won at least once, but. Um, as you can see, there's so many different acts, you know, it sort of blurs in my mind a bit, but yeah, you don't want, you, you, if they give you a little bit of a funny look, but the crowd loves it, that's all that matters. Well, it probably worked best if some of us joined the show and others kept an eye on the misters. Um, you're, you're right. It probably would be a good thing. Um, I perform all the time. Or a lot of the times, so I can bow out if y'all want spotlight. No, you're really good at this. Which yeah, means... or perhaps you'd you'd be more of a yeah. at ease in that setting. I would, but I'll okay, okay, fine. I'll, yeah. I'll 
Chester, okay. yep. you would know from your experience of seeing so many of these that the best way to usually win a crowd is to have like kind of like a group thing that has a single star at the very end. A single person that becomes the climax, that becomes the main event. You launch someone up in the air or, you know, everyone just kind of acts as like, you know, the supporting boy band for the main character. You know, that kind mm -hmm. of vibe. Yeah. And as Ricaria is kind of hyping you up, Ricaria, you have drawn the comic card. <gasps> Woo! If you, so this is a little bit of meta, but I want mm -hmm. to give you the full advantage of the card as an opportunity. Um, if you want Ricaria to step up here, you will level up if you succeed. Well, that is, <laughs> that is actually great timing because I was about to suggest something for Ricaria. Okay, go um, ahead. Circuses do love a uh, trained animal performance and they don't necessarily need to know that you have all of the intelli intelligence and brilliance of a uh, of a humanoid. Um, it's true. Akara kind of pushes their fingers together and say, um, unfortunately, I can't actually do it that again today. I kind no. of... No. We're swimming in a river. <laughs> yeah, I got really wet earlier. It was kind of uncomfortable. And I mean, like, I would, but I don't feel super comfortable with turning into a dog again. Um, but I can like make Sir Lancelot dance. Can you dance? Do you mind dancing actually? Sir Lancelot, I should ask you first before roll I an animal handling anything. check <laughs> and fully understands what I'm asking, of course. Okay, then this is an advantage then. Oh, sweet. Huzzah. Let's do this. A animal what? handling a 13 double 13. Oh. Okay, yeah, uh, Sir Lancelot's head comes up and looks at you a meaningful look in their eye, but they're a snake and you can't, they don't have eyebrows. You don't know. It's true, but I can understand them because I do have that ability. So okay. by their gestures. Okay, then Sir Lancelot <laughs> absolutely says, I will try my best. Okay. Like, it's That's a vibe that they'll try. And it's like, yes. <gasps> we, could, uh, we could help Rakaria with the uh, trapeze. Yeah. Certainly you have experience with that. Yeah, so I've, I, I've, I've dabbled my hand in, I think, about every performance at some point. I want to say I have. We I think could. I'd be more adept at that than these things. We could have. Oh, we could have fine, like, throw me up in the air at the end. Caught on the trapeze. Yeah. Oh, and then Lavella, you can catch me, because you're flying. You know, yeah. it's, though it might be best if Kayla kept an eye on the uh, misters, though a little less... Yeah. Uh, ostentatiously yeah perhaps <laughs> hmm. all right the music becomes intense you see mr light step out into the center a spotlight whoosh, lights up on him fair fair goers welcome to the main event to close out the big top extravaganza we will have volunteers from the crowd are you the next big bright shining star and you see him whip around the weather vane and point at various people let's see if you got what it takes to be the main attraction and you see the wave clear out and a group of individuals begin to waddle out. You see that there is a group of five halflings. And oh no. they That's begin like two and a half people. <laughs> they begin to um, perform like very, very K-pop style, right? And you see that they are all coordinated, and they do. I can't, I can't dance like a K-pop person. They're just like hip, hip. You know, it's very a lot cute. Of hearts. A lot of hearts. Mm -hmm. Lots of hearts. Yeah. Some presentation. Uh, and uh, there are a number of yays and whoops coming from the crowd. And then, Mr. Light points the weather vane towards the group of you. Will you step up to the show? 
Chester, <laughs> like we planned. Before we toss Vicaria up, cast yep. Featherfall on her. Okay, We're I will cast do that. a whole bunch of magic. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I can do that. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, we'll head up. Who wants to start? I think Ricaria. I would like just as. Hmm. You I start, would like dancing. <laughs> yeah, start like and they like take us or Lancelot and they're like, "All right, it's time to dance," <laughs> and we'll place Sir Lancelot down. They're like featuring dancing snake Sir Lancelot. Okay, dance. <laughs> and then we just have like fine come up and toss you up into the air. I'm gonna cast guidance on fine. Okay. <laughs> what you don't want to get just <laughs> All right, they rolled a fourteen. So yeah, they do a pretty decent job. They flex, toss you up. Kalik, um, what are you doing as this is going on? Uh, I think I was supposed to go keep an eye on on our messers, uh, since uh, Mr. Light is is once again center stage, and and trying to get to him would be pretty obvious. I guess I'll make my way back over to Mr. Witch. I think without stilts now, because okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's smart. Okay, okay. Chester, what would you like to do as part of this performance? Um, let's see. Um, Chester would pr so is she so as of right now, if I walk on the stage right now, Rikari is already in the air. Mm hmm. Okay. Never came back. Never came back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the rafters. Mine was too strong. All right. <laughs> all right, everyone. It is time for all of you to see the amazing Rikaria come flying down. Ever so softly, like maybe a feather, and he'll cast Featherfall. Okay, uh, what does this look like when you cast this spell? Um, he'll sort of like roll his hands like this, kind of like imitating sort of like, I guess, feathers. I don't know. Whatever best way you can imitate feathers with fingers. And as he does that, he kind of like rolls it up and just kind of tosses his hands out directed at uh, Ricaria. Okay, fantastic. Uh, roll me a performance check. Heck yeah. 22. Hell yeah. You, I could have went really bad or really You wrong. put on a dazzling show here. You are yeah. literally beguiling the crowd. In fact, someone that is relatively close to you in the stands just starts crying and then they throw something at you. They throw a talking doll at you. Uh, you have drawn <laughs> oh. the sun card. You get a wondrous oh. magic item. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. So oh, much. look at this doll! Yeah, it's gonna be a doll of a... Uh, we're gonna say that it's... Dragon. It's a yeti. Oh. oh! A yeti? Okay. It's a yeti Do you have wearing... An no, it's a happy yeti <laughs> wearing a dress. It's like a summery yellow orange dress. Oh, Yeti! And he'll grab it. Nice. You can add talking doll to your inventory. Hell yeah. <laughs> you just have all the magic items. <laughs> you gotta tell. <laughs> I'm wild with magic items! <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so uh, Chester cast Featherfall Lavelli. All right. Well, uh... Ricaria gets tossed into the air. Lavelli's gonna grab her by the hands and fly her really high up, doing some spins and twists before uh, a small flip to let her go into the air. Okay, go ahead and roll me performance or acrobatics. We do acrobatics. Okay, double 23. Uh oh. Nice. Hold on. Good roll. That's so good. Double 20. Very doubles. good. 
Okay, yes. Uh, so, as you do, you do this with perfect execution. Ricario, you can feel the confidence through Lavelli's hands into yours. It is your show. This is your time to shine. Lavelli, you managed to perform this with such flawlessness that you feel more confident in yourself. You have drawn the star card. You can increase any of your stats by one. Just one. Ooh. One We're point. at 20 decks, boys. Yay! Heck yeah, let's go. Okay, Ricaria, how do you finish this? I finish this by, as like I'm descending in kind of like a crescendo as the music starts to rise and kind of at that perfect moment, um, I'm gonna cast a uh, fairy fire on myself. Um, so kind of in this small area, basically it's just like an explosion of like purple and green and blue glitter that just forms in a, like a 20 foot area around Rakaria. Um, in, uh, and as these explosions go off, it's just, they just start glittering as they slowly fall down to the ground. They have their arms out, their feet are crossed and just slowly descending very majestically back to the ground. Excellent. Okay. Sorry, my phone must have died and the placeholders did. <laughs> I will be right back. You can keep uh, role playing. Uh, Rakaria, don't forget that you have an advantage and an at <gasps> 20. I know. Rakaria, dabs in the there. Dabs in the there. Dab. What is uh? What is our I mean, friend if you're the snake slow dab? falling, you have plenty of time to dab. Mm -hmm. the, plenty. This, it's like slow mo True. dab. You see, uh, Sir Lancelot is like now he's doing the worm, but he calls it the snake, um, and basically is like lifting his body up. But it's more of like a flop. It's like, huh, so huh, he's kind of like doing the huh. wave on your shoulder. No, no, he's on the ground. Oh, <laughs> so he's not even with you. He's just on the <laughs> he's on the ground, just like doing. Nice. So everyone's looking up at you, and there's just a snake that no one's looking at. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, Sir Lancelot's going all out. Just no one's looking at them. You, you took his thunder. <laughs> I did. Aww. I need that. I need that level. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Silly Lancelot. I'm sacrificing you for power. <laughs> Wait, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about how Sir Lancelot I... was uh, on the like they're on the ground like doing their dance, but they're doing like the worm, and there's I think. Uh, Meanwhile, everyone's saying, looking at Rakaria up above, not seeing Sir Lancelot doing his Stealing Sir Lancelot's thunder, and I said, "I have to sacrifice oh. you in order to get a level." <laughs> yes. Okay. Great. Roll me performance. Um, I would like to use my nat twenty on that. <laughs> Absolutely, that is a yeah. very smart thing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Where to go? Okay, uh, so describe to me how this ends as you succeed and you yes. level up. So I think at the very, like just before they touch the ground, they bring their hands towards where their horns are and like going underneath the two wizards that are there. Wait, what can the wizards cast? Um, I think it was just minor illusion. Oh, I want to use all I mean, of that that's up. That's got some value right there. I want to like make Birds. it looks like fireworks going off. There's like confetti They're everywhere. They're both just like exploding. shooting out of their little wands. Yeah, they start like casting quote unquote magic missile everywhere that explodes into fire silent fireworks as this is going on. Oh. And as like they finish casting all their spells, and I think the wizards are expended. Um, as I'm just using all of them up right now. Uh, that's when Rikaria touches the ground and does a very wondrous bow to the crowd um, and begins clapping for her compatriots as well after. Yeah. He like, completely forgets his job and just watches the show. <laughs> I, can, I, I, I imagine Caitlin's like trying not to watch, but as he's hearing all of this applause, he's just like, people think I'm great too. Oh, I should be getting applause. People love me. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, so the crowd goes absolutely wild. You see people throwing food and hugging each other. And you see everything in here just seems a bit brighter and sweeter and softer. You see that there is an ambiance in the interior of the tent here that almost seems to glow on itself. You smell sweet summer wind. You see little fireflies just glowing a little brighter and off to the side over where Kalik is 
looking over at Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, you can see the two of them look quite satisfied. They look to be scanning the crowd more than watching the performance. You see Mr. Witch subtly, sorry, Mr. Light subtly pointing the weather vane around, almost as if a homing beacon. And he gives a nod to Mr. Witch. The two of them, very briefly making eye contact with Kalik, begin to exit the tent. Burley steps up to the center and says, Thank you all for coming. This concludes the big top extravaganza. You may join us here in a few hours for the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch. And he begins to step towards the party. Rikaria, you're gently floating back down. Lands on the ground, eventually saying, Oh my gosh, that was the best. That was so much fun. You did wonderful out there. Oh, you did amazing. wonderful too. No, 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 it was you. It was you. It was you. It was all of us. It wasn't just me. I don't need a big ego. <laughs> She's like, I'm not into self absorbed um. people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kalik, what would you like to do? Um, I assume they went like through the back of the tent towards where we had seen like effectively the staff area. They look like they're leaving with the crowd. Oh. Kalik just really wants to go into the staff area. No, actually, I was specifically not going to follow them if that was the case. And now I have to actually decide because. <sighs> no, I keep running away from our party. <laughs> I make them worry. Kayla will head into the in, into the middle and, and meet up with his. Uh, meet up with the rest of the crew. OK. Uh, as you do, you see Burley approaching the party. He crosses his arms over his chest as he comes to a stop. You see the tent is beginning to empty out. You see that carnival goers are beginning to filter towards the other attractions. You see some of them are going to for food. A lot of them are ecstatic in a great mood. The carnival mood will go up one more. And it is now at maximum. Ooh. Did it. Now let's see if we can get it all the way down to zero. <laughs> yeah, we reverse. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> Early the bugbear crosses his arms and looks down to you. A bugbear wearing dungarees, fairy wings, and a helmet made of a jack-o'-lantern approaches you. Follow me, he growls. Management wants to see you. Oh, okay. Oh, um, okay. Did he do something bad? Without saying anything, he begins to lead you out of the tent. Uh, Kari is a bit nervous. The crowd really was on fire. I, I, I want to say we're going to be fine. Is this where okay. you normally do your show, Chester? Yes. Well, in that tent, yes, yes. Burley will lead you towards the staff area. As you're coming up to the staff area, you can see that it has a very tall wall of thorns tangled together surrounding a cluster of wagons that are lit by lanterns. It's barely visible through the thicket. You see that the, the wall here is about 20 feet high and looks to be about five feet thick. But as you're approaching the entrance, you see Burley lift up one of his massive hands and the <laughs> the vines begin to pull away, begins to make a way through. Enclosed oh. within is uh, eight brightly colored wagons. 
one of which is a glass-enclosed water tank, probably for the mermaid. The fanciest very clearly belongs to Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. As you're coming up, you see an individual leaning, leading, leading you into the circle of wagons. There is an aging clown with a painted grin. He puffs on a bubble pipe and glares at you as the bugbear, ignoring the clown, opens the wagon's door and ushers you inside. Perceive old washed up clown. <laughs> you like that? Uh, they should have called him Aww. Thicko. No, it's a It's an Easter egg. It's an Easter egg, and yeah. I love it, and yeah. it's amazing. Uh, so for context here, Thaco is, uh, I can't remember what their abbreviation for. It's basically the system of D&D, 1E and 2E. Uh, two hit attack. Uh, Armor um, class zero. Armor yes. class zero, yeah. Yeah, so it's a reference to the first versions of D&D being old and, and I, washed I like up. that it's the old washed up cloud i think that's hilarious can we talk about the birds on his jacket oh the, i get the it now. yeah they're great oh my god amazing rest so, in peace clown <laughs> <laughs> all right so you are ushered into this very ostentatious looking wagon and as it's pulled open you see within are Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. A flamboyant elf, who you know to be Mr. Light, grins ear to ear as he welcomes you into the wagon with a theatrical bow. Please come in. It's a delight to meet you all. I am Mr. Light, and this is my associate, Mr. Witch. He gestures to a stocky elf lounging on a bunk. He nods to you and doffs off his top hat. Mr. Light gestures to the witch-like vein, the scepter that he's been holding, and says, I have the ability to pick up every nuance of emotion here in the carnival, when it is good, when the spirits are high and there is laughter on the wind. I am able to know this. And I would like to express my gratitude for the cheer that you, fine individuals, have brought here. Mr. Witch says to you, especially in the wake of Kettle Stream, we have been worried, troubled, that Kettle Stream would bring down the mood of the entire carnival. But because of your efforts, they are salvaged. The people are happy. Unfortunately, they're still out there somewhere. Probably stirring up more trouble to get your attention. Well, that just means that we will just need you to continue doing as you have. Performing, engaging, spreading joy. But before you go... We are very curious. We would like to know why you are here at the carnival. Um, Chester. Yes. No, we're we're here for Chester. He oh, fell yes. from one of your uh, carriages as you were arriving. Hi, bosses. Hello, I don't recognize you at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Even it's it's fine. Oh. It's probably a good thing. You know yeah, that most say. <laughs> most people that meet the bosses are in trouble. Yeah, no, I, it's, I I consider it a good thing that you both don't know me. Um, well, it seems that you've brought fine folk to the carnival. What a pleasure! I have. Yes, they they helped me find my way back to the carnival. Good, good. That there, is good. there were a couple of other things. Oh, would you like to share? Avelli glances around at the others. We all seem to have been drawn together, and we all seem to have 
lost something the first time we came here. Except Kalik. I didn't lose anything. No. She he says walks up and down his outfit. Blue clothing. And now he's like <laughs> thrown a jacket over it with a bunch of multicolored scarves and like... Uh-huh. <laughs> so they, we've all lost something. They look to each other and seem to have a thoughtful exchange, wordless between them. And Mr. Light says, I would like to express my regret. We were not responsible for anything that you might have lost, but we are aware that there are forces at work on the other side that are not entirely within our control. Mr. Mm. Witch adds, the wheel of time turns ever on. What's lost is lost. What's gone is gone. So we, I, Chester and I can't get, you know, we can't find our way for like ever. They look to each other. Perhaps there's something we can do to help. But before that, we do have other responsibilities that we need to tend to. Hmm. Well, Out of curiosity, you said that uh, those things my friends lost were not of your doing. Hmm. He'll pull out the mostly punched card and flip it over so his name is showing. Mm-hmm. Were you responsible for this? Oh. Is that your name? No, no, no. Perhaps you have another friend somewhere among the people here in the carnival. Stranger Christ. things have happened. Maybe, yeah. Hmm. Well, um, I mean, we're... Since since we're gonna continue to go around the carnival, right, and 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 try to make things good, I feel like we could come to some sort of agreement, right? Maybe we're doing you this favor, and you could do something for us. I feel like that's only really fair, right? Indeed, an equal transaction. Exactly. We will assist you should you continue to keep the spirit of the carnival in high. Hmm. After the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch, we will do what we can to send you where you need to go. To get A kind in. offer. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I, I'm, I like that. Very good. You heard the reason why Kettle Stream wants your attention. You see Mr. Witch pull out his pocket watch. He flips it open, taking a quick look. He closes it. He looks up towards Burley and gives a nod. Burley opens the door again, and he says, Unfortunately, some things we cannot help with. She nods at that. And you get the sense, without so many words, that you are being asked to leave. Before the next place we go, send us right back here. (laughs) (laughs) I appreciate you both taking the time for us. And he'll he'll step out of the cart first. As you do, Mr. Light goes... (laughs) And he whips his... Which light weather vane and points it at you, Chester. You've been doing very, very well. But you said you didn't recognize me. No. Oh. The witch light vane never lies. Oh. I guess someone has been watching me. Well, I'm glad I'm doing good. Ta-ta. Nods his head and walks away enough to let everyone else off the cart. Okay. Hmm. Brick will toddle off the cart. Okay. Something tells me when Kettle Stream learns that they're not getting uh, the contact that they need on the other side. They'll not. There'll be none too happy about that. 
We should try to find him again. Well, we all agree it's weird they didn't try anything during the show, right? Certainly. I yes. thought for sure they would. <clears throat> right. Where could they be? Early. Had anything strange happened during the show? Something that shouldn't? Burley closes the door and begins to lead you away. Uh, as this happens, can I get perception checks from everyone? Maybe. Okay, that is a nat 20 into a 22 from Kayla. Ooh. Holy shit. Five from Maybe Chester. Maybe enough for that nat one earlier. 20 plus <laughs> gang, let's go. 22 from Lavelli and a 12 from Ricaria. Okay, Kalik oh, and Lavelli. As the door closes, you hear something muffled on the other side of the door. Something about the disappearance of Burley's unruly brother, but that's all you catch. Um, as, as the group of you are being led out, Burley says, what was the question again? What was the question again? Lavelli repeats, did anything happen that wasn't supposed to during the carnival? I don't Big think show. so. I'm not of the insight mm. that anything transpired. Well, I guess all we can do is check out the other exhibits and look for cattle stream along the way. Mm. And as he begins to step off, all of a sudden the door on the back of the wagon bursts open Mr. Light kind of swinging out and hanging and says over to Thaco, Please give our guests a parting gift for their talents and all of their effort. He kind of looks at the group of you with a mischievous look in his eye and then he just disappears and the door shuts again. Thaco, the uh, washed up clown uh, all right he takes his bubble pipe and he sticks it into his belt he says what kind of balloon animal do you want oh my gosh <laughs> oh, I'm so excited right now. This is like the highlight of my minute. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, do I want a snake? I already have one. I'm not going to replace you, Sir Lancelot. Don't worry. Um, And Ricaria uh... just like goes in and just tries to think like very hard. You see them like go through their like monster manuals. So they'll just sit for a second. Faco just kind of watches you with super dead eyes. What do you want? Gods, please um, just pick something. Is it one for the group or one for all? What do you want? He looks over at Lavelli. How about a displacer beast? Fine. See. <laughs> and just a very impressive <laughs> twist of fingers and breath <laughs> and plastic. He ties a little ribbon onto a displacer beast animal balloon and hands it to you. It seems to be magically enchanted, so it floats in the air. What do you want? He looks over at Chester. <clears throat> oh, um. Hmm. You could get um, your purple dragon for your show. I could. Do you have any purple balloons? Ugh. <sighs> Of course, I have purple balloons. Do you take me for an amateur? <laughs> Hands you a purple dragon. And it nice. floats in the air. Yeah. Hydra. Yes. That, that's not as interesting and unique as you think it is. <laughs> Here you go. Okay, I know what I want. I want a beholder. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> that is entirely unsurprising. Yay! And he makes the beholder and he holds it out to you. And then he'll make whatever Riley asks here. And then he um, says, now go away. Riley asked for a chessboard. 
<laughs> yes, his, his, his lost sword. griffin. <laughs> oh, oh, his griffin. His griffin. I don't want to roleplay. We're, we're for just him. putting words in his yeah. mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're putting words. <laughs> um. Okay, and then uh, Burley has been quiet the entire time. He waits off to the side, not seeming to want to engage with Thaco. And as the group is done, Thaco plumps back down, pulls out his bubble pipe, and starts bloop, 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 bubbling again. Ah, uh, he was uh, certainly a, a nice guy, I guess. Yeah, he made us his blue needle. was so nice. <laughs> yeah, I like my purple dragon. Once we're like out of, out of earshot of Thaco, <laughs> I really hope that he's not making those for the guests. He's not exactly got a carnival demeanor. Yeah. Ballad. Perhaps that's part of the act. <laughs> Being that's really true. sad and depressed? Yeah, probably. Yeah. After leading you out of the staff area, you see the brambles begin to close back up. Burley gives a low sigh and says, Stay out of trouble. The crowning will be in about four hours. Hey, we oh. haven't caused any trouble. Good. He begins well, to slowly um, walk away. I think, Chester, you would have mentioned mm -hmm. that you'd like to go see Northwind again at the Dragonfly Rides. And yes. I know that, Ricaria, you mentioned an interest in the Feasting Orchard. It has been a long time since we've eaten. Yeah, I'm really hungry. You know what? <clears throat> The, the the dragonflies will be there and so will my pal. Um so let's get food first. Okay. Let's do the food same first. place. There's the orchard. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. right next to each other. And Ricaria, yeah. um they are like, who is the map again? Can I see it? Lovelli holds it up. Yeah, I was saying I think Lovelli has it now. Yeah, okay. they'll take it, and they, like, fold out their map. <laughs> oh my god, we got props. We got props. Thank you, zombie, again. You're, you're welcome. We got props. You pulled so out they... a Mr. Witch card earlier. I did. Yeah. So they pull out um, the carnival map and kind of look at it, and they're like, yeah, yeah, the Feasting Orchard is right next to the Dragonfly ride, so we can... Um, I don't know if we have to wait, like, half an hour for us to digest, um, but I think it'll be fine. Like, if, if we get sick, it's okay. We'll just eat more food. It's fine. All right. A thumbs up. So the idea is to go to the feasting orchard first. Mm -hmm. All right. So as the group slowly begins to make their way, you see that there are high spirits here all around. You see children are running around laughing. You see that there are jugglers out in the the thoroughfare here, and they are throwing a number of items up in the air. And everyone's having a great time. You hear bouts of laughter left and right. And as you're approaching the feasting orchard, there's a music change. Yay. And Kalik is gone. <laughs> Where's Kalik? <laughs> I just Apparently thought, he wasn't oh, hungry. It, it's just a high stealth check. I'm still here, I promise. Ah. Who said that? <laughs> yeah, who said that? We have not even said that. Kalik? <laughs> Music and mirth radiate from this park. The heady scents of flowers, mead, and berry pie waft through the air. Stilt walkers pluck fruit from the trees. Musicians drum, pipe, and strum. And everywhere there is singing, dancing, and an inordinate amount of custard. You can see that there is set up here a fairy cake eating contest. Oh, this is the cake eating contest. Terrific. God, I love cake. That's right, we were told yes, about that sir. earlier. What? This isn't made with real fairies, is it? I would certainly hope not. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so as you're kind of like filtering in, you see this this uh, very rosy-cheeked individual come up to you. They're wearing a fine dress and a frilly apron, and they say, Hello, dearies, welcome to the fairy cake eating contest. My name is Bella. Welcome, welcome. Would you like to participate? Yes, all of us rules. are participating. Yes, there are very many rules, but it is quite simple. All you've got to do is eat cake. 
But Ooh. I will need your ticket. Take a ticket. Okay. Ticket. Okay. Uh, so she will punch each one of your tickets and say, would you like to sit together or be spread out? I hope we should sit together. I think we should sit together. Yeah. Uh, cool. Lavelli looks over towards Riley and says, I would like to be separate. <laughs> all right. All right. Here you go. Take a seat. And uh, you are joined with a group of other people. All right, so we are going to play Fairy Cake Eating Contest mini game. Yes. So the goal is simple. Eat as many cupcakes as you can within 60 seconds. So the way this is going to work, a contestant can swallow a cupcake in about three seconds and safely eat as many as three plus your constitution modifier. For each additional cake eating eaten, the contestant must succeed on a DC 10 constitution saving throw or take one die eight custard damage. Custard hey. damage. Subtract the custard damage from your hit points as normal. When you're reduced to zero hit points, you are unable to continue, you lose the contest, and you have custard splattered all over you, so you don't have to roleplay getting sick or anything like that. Um, at the end, you regain all your hit points, and there may be a prize. Hooray! So, um, I want all of you to write down, um, uh, so three plus your constitution modifier. So write that down and keep that as your number. That's going to be your starting number. Mm -hmm. There's okay. going to be math here. Okay. Don't so cheat. I'm trusting you. No, that's fine. Um, so the mo we're, 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 <laughs> we're looking at our modifier and we're adding yes. three to the modified, the big number. Not the big number, like no. so, like the plus so, one oh, or the plus two. Like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, like my on. constitution is fourteen, so I have a modifier of two. So I mine, need five cakes. Yeah, mine sixteen and a three. So I just want to yeah. make sure I was so write down right six. Place. That's going to be your starting number, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have rounds, right? So cake number one. All right, I need constitution saving throws from everybody. Oh, I'm oh, so neat. excited. Oh. I'm gonna eat Thank so much all. cake. I'm 20! A <laughs> I'm a bird, I don't gotta chew, I can just choke it down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Kalik, you do not succeed. You take seven custard damage. Man. Ooh, that is rough. Ow. Ow. All right. Cake. Delicate stomach. So how many extra cakes do we have? Um, there are an infinite amount of cakes. So we're just going to the last person standing here. Okay. Oh, okay. So everyone add one to your counter. Okay? So add one. You all you all add one cake, even if you fail. You just take damage if you fail. Alright. Okay. Cake number two. I need constitution saving throws from everybody. Okay, everyone succeeded. No one <laughs> takes damage. It's Add trying to go out early. Add another one. All right, kick number three. Oh, goodness. Ooh. I feel like this is just going to go bad. Oh, <gasps> oh, Damn, Kayla. Wow. Nice. Okay, Um. so we got 11, 14, 22, 15. All right, add another one. All right, kick number four. I think just angry eating oh. at this point. Oh. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my god. This is fast adding numbers. Alright, that's another nat 20 from Chester. <laughs> Kalik, oh, yeah. roll seven. I love cupcake. I love cupcake. I, I think I'm out of the composition at this point. Alright, you take Kalik's eight failing. damage. Alright. So, Kalik's failing. So you have in total taken 15 damage, custard damage. Are you yeah, still up? I, I'm at two. Okay, so you're still in. You're still in. You're fine. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. All right, new round. <laughs> Cake number five. Oh, uh -oh. Lavelli. Oh, Ricaria. Okay, oof. I high rolled that. All right. Stop high rolling, Stella. <laughs> Ricaria and Lavelli take eight points of custard damage. Owie. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. All right. Cake number six. 17. Oh, Lavelli with another seven. Oh, if you roll a 30. <laughs> you take three custard damage. 
All right, cake number seven. Ooh. Oh no! That is a nine from Ricaria. You take seven custard damage. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so full. I cake have to keep going. Eight. I, I'm just gonna remind, uh, remind Matihi, you did level up, you have more health. Oh, I know, I already did that already. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you were counting <laughs> He's got an that. advantage no, in cake was. eating. It's yeah. true, Ooh, I do. Kalik. I'm down. You take seven oh, custard, okay. I'm, I'm out. All right, you are out. All right, so uh, you do not count this cake as a success. <laughs> Tell us what we see here. You don't have to role play getting sick, but you are out. Uh. Kalik, um, just based on the, they have these long tables in the, in, on the map, uh, mm -hmm. there, I imagine that he, he gets like half the cake in and then he just like pushes it away and then falls backwards off, off the bench. Just like, nope, I'm getting as much space between me and that cake as I can. <laughs> oh my God. Awesome. All right. So you are out cake number nine. 19. Ooh, Lavelli with a six. You take three custard damage. We're still at it, boys. One HP in a dream. Cake number 10. <laughs> you only need one hit point to win. Ooh, that's oh, no! an eight from Ricaria. Oh! And that's a full eight damage. Oh, custard four damage. hit points. Okay. Let's go. Wow. Cake number 11. That level up pulling its weight. Yeah, for real. Cake is so yummy. Chester oh hasn't taken God. any damage yet, I think. I can't He's believe cheated. this. He's used oh. to this. He's done it before. All right, you all succeed. Yeah. All right, cake number 12. God, the hardest part for me is jumping between my numbers and adding cakes. Oh, well, you just ah. add you just add whatever yeah, cake, just add ah, what cake number it is. You're out. I'm out. Yeah, I yeah. zero. Seven. Okay, tell us what we see here. So you see Ricaria. It's just like tons of like is it like little pieces of cake or is it like full they're cakes? like cupcakes oh okay cupcakes they're just like there's cupcake like smeared all over their face like um you see sir lancelot sneak up and like lick one of the cupcakes um Aww. and like at one point like ricaria just like tries to eat the last one it's half finished they put it down they're like i'm just gonna take a nap really quick and they just fall <laughs> off the chair and just start snoring right Mom. there i love it Oh my god. Okay, so that does not count as a cake for you. Uh, cake number 13. Lavelli just locks eyes with Chester. Ah, uh, I get it. that she's barely I holding on. Ooh, Chester failed. Chester, <laughs> Chester, you take five custard damage. Cakes are just too good. Cake 14. She punches the table and <laughs> grabs another cupcake. You said oh, I did. Oh, no! no! Oh. Ah! Only one exactly. damage there. That was all I had left. I'm out. <gasps> all right. Tell us what, how Lavelli falls. So she punches the table, goes to grab a cupcake, opens her mouth, and then just face plants into a plate of cupcakes. Oh, no. All right, Chester. Mm -hmm. You see everyone around you one by one. They fall. We're all dead. Did you just say roll a death save? Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, Chester, Nothing. tell me what you do, what you say as everyone is falling one by one around you. I, um, he keeps just eating these cupcakes. He, he's enamored with this. He's just, he's done these before. He's really good. He really enjoys these cupcakes. Um, I'm going to just, if I may, say the one that I took damage with. Mm -hmm. Was that I got so excited. I mean, all the cupcakes, I forgot to take a wrapper off one of them. So I just was like, I ate the like, oh, uh -huh. and I just kept going. I love um, that. And then um, he'll just kind of like look at everybody down. Is everyone just out, passed out? Or are they conscious? Like, could they hear me? Maybe if you shake them. Okay. Um, he'll just look at like everyone and go, oh, um, I guess everybody's full. And he'll, like, go over to make sure everyone looks okay. Like, no one's, like, um, I don't want to describe too many things. But, you know, like, making sure that they're not yeah. they're breathing and everything's good. Everyone's That's still breathing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so you see that a number of pixies come over. I think this happens all the time. And everyone is kind of taken to gently rest on a plush meadow of soft grass. And everyone just has, like, a nap, a cake-induced nap. 
And uh, what the uh, Bella comes up to you and says, Dearie, you are the yeah. champion of the fairy cake eating contest. Here is your love prize. Yay, I love my cupcakes. Okay, you get a cupcake Ooh. in a special box. Oh. This cupcake will function as a potion of invisibility. Oh. Oh, that's not going to show up. All right. It's because it's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you have to eat the whole cupcake to get gain the benefit. So if you take a small mm. bite out of it, it's not going to work. Okay? Okay. So add cupcake of invisibility to your inventory. Yeah. And he'll put the cake cupcake of validation. In. It's just got a good job written on it. <laughs> cake of validation. Okay. Thank you. And he'll he'll take the and he'll put it in his uh he'll put it in his backpack. My pleasure. It seems that your friends have been taken over there to the napping orchard. Yes, uh, I think they're gonna need it. Indeed. Well, I've got to clean up these tables, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the carnival. Thank you. If you get a yes. break, I hope your break is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, dearie. She begins to waddle off. We'll say that some time passes by. And Ella, yeah. Can we get a roll to see how many cupcakes I ate? How many you ate? No. How many fine ate? Or was he, oh, he's, fine. Is he on a diet? Fine, yeah. fine didn't come with you. You <gasps> were separated. Oh no! Because <laughs> yeah. I got so distracted by cupcakes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's get a final tally of how many cupcakes everyone had. Seventeen for Rick. Mm. 12. So, so 14 didn't count for me, so 18 for Lavelli. Ooh. I might have miscounted because I got 17 as well, but I. Yeah, you're ahead. So you should be at 14 plus your modifier. 14 plus. So you should 40, be at 17. Then. That is 17. Oh. Did I math right? Okay. Good job. Probably not. Didn't you say your modifier was like 6? No, it's my five. modifier is three. Yeah, you're at ninety. No, no, oh, okay. no. Isn't yeah. it? Isn't it three plus modifier plus no, mm -hmm. the, the roll? Oh, yes. yeah. 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 So fourteen plus six. So he's at twenty-two. Then, twenty. Because he's at 20. his modifier is eight. Yeah. No, it's not. Or his modifier is five plus yeah. three. Yeah. Oh, eight. my modifier. Oh. I'm just saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, we know. Yeah. yeah. We know. Chester Fine. One. I ate twenty <clears throat> cupcakes. We'll just go Yay. twenty cupcakes. That's a nice even number. We're good. Very good. I can't math that fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> so as the group of you gently wake up, you open your eyes to see these great trees kind of looming over you. And seated in a swing is someone watching you. They are strumming their lute. And they seem to have a little companion in their lap. That's a good point. Hmm. Uh, uh, Caleb, Caleb does not does not gently wake up. He sits bolt upright, and uh, it goes, Vicaria, doodling, uh -huh. doodle. <laughs> uh, he he's gonna go rummaging through his bag and pull out his uh, his um uh forgetting the name and I'm even looking at my disguise kit um forgery kit forgery kit yes he's gonna pull out his, his forgery kit uh be like right um you were trying to to draw the mermaid and you didn't have supplies uh and and when you guys were on the snail ride I was getting out my forgery kit for you so that my art supplies, he says, like realizing people might be able to hear him. <laughs> uh, I I thought my perhaps, criminal uh, supplies. I thought perhaps <laughs> they would be uh, useful for for your note taking. Oh, thank you, uh, Caleb. He 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 is kind of this this. I that's actually I, what I was looking for when when Kettlestream snuck off. 
oh hey like and they kind of come over and like lean down by Kalik. um say it's okay no one blames you for losing track of them there i do lavelli i didn't ask um it's okay Kalik. It, it happens sometimes and you know what because we're all together we all know what we gotta do and we're all best friends we're gonna do this together we're gonna find them again and we're gonna make sure everyone stays happy here so don't you be the only non-happy person here okay all right uh, i i just i felt bad since it was my job but it's okay um, here, we're getting paid he, for it so it's fine he, he holds out to the 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 kit to her thank you She's take it. she's right, you know. This individual swinging nearby says, gently playing on their loot. Everything will be just fine. Oh, uh, h- hello there. Hello. Oh. It is a pleasure to meet you again. Uh, again? Again? We've okay. met before. Indeed, we've met many times. Perhaps another world, another time. But you are exactly as you should be, here and now. Um, I do apologize. Uh, I seem to be floundering in search of your name. Uh, would you care to remind me? My name is Eliwick Tumblestrom. Tumblestrom to my friends, of which you all are, of course. I see Does that this you ring any kind of bell. Nope, 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 nope. Kay. She says, um, "I trust that you found your tickets." There's a bit of a shiny look to her eye. Well, those were from you. Indeed. Yes, they were. A very gracious gift. It is important that you were here. Why? You will see. In time. Oh. I like your frog. Thank What's you. their name? They look down. <laughs> the end. The end. It's a frog with no name. I shouldn't tell you now. <laughs> oh. Um, Ricario looks at the frog. What's your name? They just smile at you. Hey, I'm not getting mad at this frog. Okay, that's fine. I'll work on you. Why? I mean, what's the odds that Kettle Stream turned into a frog? Oh, this is not Kettle Stream. Uh, Stream Kettle. Kettle Stream had been using a... Uh, um, disguise self spell rather than a polymorph wouldn't have been able to become a non humanoid. Hmm. Yes. Oh, that's true. Right. Um, you see Eliwick kind of leaning off to the side. I think if you look and catch up to them right now, they should be at the carousel. Thank Quite you. helpful. Thank you, Tara. She just smiles. we should go but also um uh i don't know where fine is we kind of lost where, where are your friends calic um he has I'm not, not kept sh- any track of them. i'm not sure when i headed into the back tents at the uh at the big topper i asked them to stay behind i assumed they were amongst the crowd but i, I wasn't sure where they'd gotten off to I assumed they'd been saving seats for you. Were they not with you? I, I don't think so. They Honestly, I don't remember. I just saw bulging muscles and I was just gone. I'll have to remind them to um, do a better job of party loyalty. Chester. Ready. Tell yeah. me when to stop. Thank you, what? V. Oh, okay. It's your it's prize, prize for winning. <laughs> it's my prize for winning. Yeah. Stop. Is that a good prize? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's only the death card. It's only the death card. 
Quack! See, whoopsie. Amelia slowly gets up. Good job, Mr. Fearless Leader. You lost your two halflings. I, uh, I didn't lose them. They're just on a side quest. You see, Ellie Wick <laughs> just kind of give a small laugh. <laughs> Don't worry. You will find everything you lost in time. You should run along now. Thanks, Elliwick and Frog Friend. Um, I'll learn your name soon. And like gives them like these like like <laughs> narrow eyes, like staring, locking eyes with this toe. It's like, I'll get you. And uh says, Should we go to the carousel? Should we hurry? Straight away. Hmm. Oh yes, we it's a carousel. Okay, let's go. And your carry will start running. Okay. Uh so as oh. the group leaves, uh we see in the background Elliwick do another <laughs> and almost as if lighting a sparkler we see a circle just and then she winks out of existence ooh fancy it was the frog the frog did the magic <laughs> <laughs> the frog's an archway all right uh so as the group begins to make their way over towards the carousel i think this would be a great time for us to take a quick break we will be back in five minutes. Grab some water, do a stretch, and we will be our bee. So as we head over to the carousel, there is a music change. You see that this area is a little quieter than where you had just been moments before. A procession of wooden unicorns stand motionless on a circular wooden platform Fair goers clamber, so in the distance you are currently. You can see that fair goers clamber onto the unicorn's backs, and there is a centaur that sets the ride in motion, pulling on a lever. The unicorns shake their manes and creak to life, catering, cantering around the carousel to the delight of their riders. They go around and round and round. And as the ride comes to a stop, they disembark and they continue on their merry way. Let me show you some of the coolest art I've ever seen. No specific reason. Is the centaur hot? Yes. Look at the picture. I was about to ask. Oh my god, they're so look at hot. That look at the. Yeah, I was gonna say, look at that picture. That they're is so all hot. Of you can look. click it and it'll zoom in and be oh, transparent. Oh, oh. Yeah, it will god. be. It's great. Yeah. They are very hot. I place your bets before Rikaria tries to talk and flirt with them. In right three. now. Too. Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't already. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I think heading up, of course, Rakari is seeing the centaur. Um, very taken. She's like, oh my god, I gotta stop. But I don't <laughs> have to. Um, <laughs> hey, do you, if you all want to like ride the carousel, I'm just gonna like get to know the the people here a bit more we are looking for kettle street don't yes. forget oh yeah let me get perception checks from everyone perception. 11 from calic 18 from chester six from lavelli 16 from ricaria okay the group of you look around chester and uh ricaria specifically you definitely get the sense that Kettle Stream is not here anymore. You must have just missed them. As you're looking at this very brilliantly dressed centaur, you see the fake wings uh, complement their outfit. They have their arms crossed over their chest, and she looks at the group of you and says, It'll cost one punch if you want to ride the ticket. Ride the ticket. One punch of the ticket. If you want to get on the ride. I'll say with that 16 perception, because you are definitely perceiving there, Ricaria, <laughs> you see that there's a sadness behind her eyes. Mm. Ricaria looks up at them and says, Um, I don't mean to to, to pry or anything. Um are are you okay? Uh she 
looks away and you can see that she's trying to fight back tears. She says, I'm I'm all right. I'll be okay. Did someone, Did someone... go ahead. <laughs> Exactly the, the exact same, same sentence. thing, but you go ahead. Did someone say something? No, no, it's a situation. A long, long one. Well, I mean, you, you look like you need to talk it out a little bit. Do you want to? It's okay if you don't. I do, but and all of a sudden she starts to kind of gag and choke a little and all you see her coughing up brown tree sap. Oh no. And she tries to excuse herself. She moves off to the side and then she returns and says, mm, "I can't talk about it." What's going on? Why are you Are you sick? In a way, I think perhaps she means she literally can't speak that. True, it could be some kind of uh, a curse. Curse, yes. Spell she gives a very rueful smile. <gasps> Did a kangu come through here? Um, she looks around. I don't think so. They probably changed to someone else. Probably. In all likelihood. Can I try to assess what is going on? Yeah, absolutely. Roll me an insight check. Anybody can do this. Oh, oh uh, so while insightful. we're doing that, I assume that we're back to full health after eating the cakes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That was an actual damage. That yeah. was custard damage. It's special. It was, well, right. Special. It was custard damage, and I didn't know. Special custard damage. Custard damage never goes away. You can't heal that. <laughs> you can't heal custard damage. Custard damage is forever. <laughs> right on the thighs <laughs> uh, so we got a 20 insight from Rick and also Kalik, Chester 9, Lavelli 5, Chester and Lavelli you can tell that she's really uncomfortable but mm -hmm. beyond that nothing really um, I'll say that with the 20s um, you get the sense that there's something there's something very powerful at play here. You know that curses are a big deal. And you get the sense that whoever this person is, uh, they are completely wrapped up in it. This isn't a minor thing. This seems to be a long-term thing. And because they're not like, help me, help me, you know? It seems like that they've kind of come to terms with it themselves and they're just coping. Rikaria looks over to Kalik, very concerned. It seems more potent than anything I've uh, I've studied. Whoever did this must be significantly powerful. You see Diana uh, shift around on their hooves, and they look over to the carousel and says, says very seriously to Ricaria, you need to speak to the unicorns. Okay. We'll speak to the unicorns. But we'll also ride! Because we have to, to talk to them. Here's my ticket. Um, punch. Hey, Kayla, go hold up. Punch card. Punch, 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 punch. Lavelli will hold back. Hold back? Okay. Um, you see Diana reach into a cupboard next to the lever, and she produces a small clay pot full of gold paint, and there's a paintbrush in it. She wordlessly extends it out to Ricaria. Ricaria will take it um, and says, do I color them in? Um, she kind of rubs at her hair, looks around, and says, I'm going to close the carousel while it goes under some repairs. Okay. 
And then they look over to the others and say, I don't know what to do with this. Um, um, you need to speak to the unicorns. Okay. Sounds like we gotta speak to the unicorns. I guess. Let's, Maybe let's... they can only read. <gasps> Maybe. Maybe. That's a good point. Okay. So, uh, Chester, what do you want to do here? Um. I suppose oh. I suppose Chester could go under the curse. Well. Okay. So the three of you will head off. Lavelli, what do you want to do here? He's gonna check around the area for like signs of potentially where Kettle Stream could have gone. Okay. Um, I'll carry over your perception. Actually, no. Go ahead and roll me another perception here as Thank we kind of shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a nice GM. Wow, you rolled a seven. Okay. Hey, it's better than the last one. Um, okay, you look around. There is no, there is no one else in the area, especially because Diana, uh, as the as Ricaria, Kalik, and Chester begin to head towards the carousel, she's beginning to wave people away, and she says, "I'm sorry, we're closing for essential repairs right now. Please come back later." Ricaria, Kalik, and Chester, roll me perception checks. Mm, I'm always nervous. Seven <laughs> from Calic. No. Hey. Eighteen and eighteen from nice. Chester and Ricario. Okay. So as you kind of clamber up onto the platform here, you see eight unicorns made completely out of wood, and they are in various poses. You see that there are bridles that go from their mouths all the way to their saddles, and you see that there are name tags on the bridles. Some of the names are legible, and others are worn, indecipherable. They seem to have faded over time. So there are four pairs. The first pair... So there are basically in, in two, columns of two, right? Um, the first pair... Uh, you see one named Fortune, and you see one with a faded name. <laughs> You see the, the second pair. You see. I should have typed this out in advance. You see, in the second pair, you see one named Fall, and the other one is kind of blurred out. Uh, in the third pair, you see one say Stone, and the other one is blank. Uh, and then the last one. See one named Stitch. The other one is kind of faded out. Hmm. Is there a way I can show chat this? Nope. Hmm. Oh my gosh! I <laughs> I think I get some of these already. Should mm -hmm. I make an intelligence check to make sure that Ricard? I'm gonna make an intelligence check to make sure that Ricard yeah, gets it. sure whatever Just you want. Because I so I'm personally not a fan of puzzles on stream because like your character's stuff is not gonna be your character's brain is not your brain. But I think this one is right. cute. So uh, if at any point you're stumped with any puzzles that we do on stream, um, you can always be like. Can I roll an investigation check? And I'll basically we can like Ugh. role play it instead of doing an actual puzzle. But it hurts me because I've I already like see like three of these and okay. I'm not there. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh so with an eleven, your own judgment I call. Think, yeah, I think it's over ten. So Rikari is like, oh, I think I, I get it. Okay, so we take this paint, right? And Maybe we can talk to the unicorns to ask what their names are, but like I'm, I'm pretty sure that I know this one. And they go over to the one that's the second pairing, the one that's the PR blank, and it says fall. Um, and they go over to the unicorn that's just the PR, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Hi, can you understand me?" The unicorn does not move. Hmm. They look over to fall. Can you hear me? Does not move. Darn. Okay. Um, and they'll take that little golden paintbrush, dip it into a little pot of gold paint, and they're going to fill in the rest as uh, the full name being Pride. Okay. 
Uh, as you do, uh, you see the ink instantly begin to dry, and it shifts so that it perfectly matches the font that was previously there. It seems that uh, you did, in fact, solve that one. Okay, perfect. Now we just gotta figure out the rest. I know this one, and they point to the one that says stone. It's like, it's stone and moss. But the other ones, oh. I'm not quite sure. A stitch in time saves nine. Stitch in time? Like nine. Nine! <gasps> okay, okay. So they go over to they go over and to Fortune stone. favors the bold. <gasps> that oh was one gosh. of my mother's favorites. Oh, you're so good at this, Kay. Like, oh my gosh. And they like rush over to the stone and they fill it in with moss. Mm -hmm. um, credit where it is due. I did not know what any of these were until you f filled in pride. And then I was like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had all but nine figured out because I'd never actually yeah. heard that one before. I haven't so either. I, so I want to I want to get, I want to uh, I, I give uh, credit where it's due because that was definitely like, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> so the group of you kind of put your heads together and you begin to fill out these names. And as you do, all of a sudden, the unicorns come to life and they stand in place and you see them turn their heads to look towards you. All at Hi. once. <laughs> Hello. All at once, they begin to speak to you telepathically. They tell each one of you something different. Get ready for some lore dump here. Lore dump. Okay, to my notepad of lore dump. To Ricaria and Chester. They tell you you are looking for someone by the name of Scabatha Nightshade. Oh, the nightshade. Okay. You will find them in a dead, hollowed-out tree in a sylvan forest. <clears throat> oh, okay. She... sleeps in a dollhouse and can't remember the first creature she sees when she wakes up. Okay. Mm. For Riley and Kalik, you learned that you're looking for someone named Endolin Moongrave. You'll find them in a mountaintop theater. And... They have foreseen her own their own death, which happens during an eclipse. Or Chester, no, Lavelli. I still hear this. Uh, so this is what you hear, Lavelli. Even though I'm outside. Yes, you okay. still hear this. Um, you can tell that it's coming from them. So, Lavelli, you hear that you're looking for someone named Bavlorna Blightstraw. Um, they live in a rambling cottage on stilts in a fae swamp. Um, they are allergic to seeing someone run Windershins, which is counterclockwise. Huh. Thanks for explaining that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> First time I read that, I didn't know what it meant, and I just kind of played I'm it like... off like I knew what it meant, and then yes. I forgot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm yeah, glad we're the second group. <laughs> so you're you're given all of this information, and it doesn't really make any sense to any of you. You don't know who these people are, what these things like. Most of it just sounds like nonsense. But you get the sense that this is a bit of a plea that the unicorns want to help you. And these are secrets that will guide you.
So mm. as you kind of process all that, Lavelli, um, mm -hmm. you do not find any sign of Kettle Stream. You see Diana is kind of waiting for everyone to climb onto the unicorns. Uh, having had no luck with her own search, she'll head over towards Diana. Okay. Uh, she looks up at you, yes? So, was no trouble caused before we came here? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, there were a group of people riding just before you. One of them ran off in a hurry, but... I'm not you sure. Know which way they went? Hmm, they went towards the dragonfly rides. Oh! Jester just says, oh, from the tent. Oh! <laughs> um, Lavelli will glance over there and then look at the carousel, which just talked to her. These unicorns, they tell you something, don't they? They know very many things. They may be. Kettle Stream came here, hoping to talk to them too. Perhaps. I know that they will only speak to those that know their name. She nods, crosses her arms, and watches the closed carousel, waiting for the others. I guess Rikari kind of hops off afterwards and says... Well, that was interesting. Um, thank you. I think. The Make unicorns kind of just like nuzzle you. Oh. Pet these wooden unicorns. Never mind, I'm going to be here for a second. <laughs> Starts petting the unicorns. That's fine. Hey, Kaylee's going to come down like, you know, face, face to face with one of these unicorns. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, uh, you know things, I see. They cultishly toss their head. Diana, anything you can offer us in the way of helpful tips? Uh, seems that she's got a bit of a curse on her. They shake their head no, and then they shake their head yes. All right, good girl. Diana calls out and says, if you want to ride them, you might as well. I punched your ticket. Oh, good point. Yes, let's ride yes. the unicorns. Yes, I agree. Let's, let's, let's ride one. Okay. Sure. Uh, what? Which ones are you going to ride? I need the names. Ah. I want to ride Moss. Okay. Fortune, duh. Fortune, duh. <laughs> Fortune, duh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna hear, ride, uh, hearing oh. this part, Lavelle is going to give Diana her ticket as well. Okay. Punch. And then she'll head in towards the others. Okay. I'm going to ride Fall. Okay. Because you Ironic. fell from the sky. <laughs> Ha ha ha! Alright, um, which one do you want to ride, Lavelli? Uh, bold. Bold, okay. So, Kalik, uh, you are up in the first row, and Lavelli rides next to you. Um, in the second row is Chester, the third row is Rick, and then we see Riley jump onto one of the other ones. And then they begin to, in chorus, rotate around the platform and it's a pretty fun ride. It's a uh, very dynamic. The spirits of the unicorns seem to be quite lively. Um, you hear some cute music or whatever. I don't know the carousel music. That's no, that's the carousel music. Now that is it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Eventually it comes to a stop and Diane kind of sidles up to the group of you. You see the unicorns just 
return back to their wooden state. Completely inanimate. And Diana says to you, I appreciate it. For all your help. Did they ever tell you where to go? I don't have anywhere to go. I mean, you could. Wait, you're working. Hmm. <laughs> I was going to say you can come with us, but you're busy. But I mean, if you want to come with us at some point. This is my home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The carnival has been good to me. We don't plan to stay here forever. Is there nowhere they've said that your curse could be broken? She begins to try to talk, and then you see mushrooms beginning to blister up on her fingers, and she begins to cry out in pain, and she stops talking. Corelli frowns. It's okay. We, we don't have to talk about it. It's fine. Sorry. Could you mind it? What? Gestures. No. I... She tries and you see the blisters coming back up. Well, Ellie stops. Mm -hmm. Pushing. I'm sorry. It's manageable. I just can't do anything about it. Well, I'm sorry this happened. Um, thank you, though, for helping us here. I want to help anyone as much as I can. Nikaria smiles up to them and kind of hand back the paint and the little brush. They, they very carefully take it back and set it where they had procured it. And uh, Diana says... I'm just a human who made a very bad deal. Oh. Well, for what it's worth, I think you look very beautiful. Um, uh, yes, those you, are the words I'm using. You see her blush, and though she has sadness in the backs of her eyes, she kind of looks a little flustered and says, well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your visit here. I don't know if I'll enjoy it as much as right now, but we'll see. She blushes more, and you see her tail just kind of flick. I think Rikaria, surprising confidence in Rikaria when it comes to this, uh, is going to give them a wink and say, oh, should we head off to the Dragonfly Rites? Can you at least tell us your name? Diana. Diana Cloppington. That's a really cute name. Yeah, Thank that's you. quite a cute name. I'm Ricari, yeah. Then she's going to look over to Kalik and whisper, Is Ricaria always like this? Ricaria, I uh, can sometimes be a bit fanciful, let's say. So then, this will be reoccurring. Most likely. Well, Diana here said that one of the previous riders ran off on their own in the direction of the dragonfly rides. Maybe they heard something or tried to from the unicorns. And perhaps well, we were it was arriving as they were. We were arriving as they were leaving. Um, perhaps uh, they spotted us and decided to make haste. Maybe we should go. I guess we should go follow them. Okay. Does the party want to head over to the dragonfly rides? Heck yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. Oh, I need to move the timer up. Okay, so we move the timer up. One! Okay. As the group of you make your way to the dragonfly rides, you see... Huge lily pads resting on the surface of a glistening pool with phosphorant algae. Giant dragonflies use the lily pads as landing platforms, buzzing loudly overhead with wings as brilliant as stained glass windows and alighting 
briefly to drop off and picked up, pick up excited passengers. Near the entrance, you see a small smiling tree turning your way and beckoning you closer. As we see oh. Northwind. <clears throat> Northwind, my friend. He walks, up, he walks up to Northwind saying that. Okay. Uh, as you do, Northwind bends down. You hear the creaking of the bark. It says, Hello, Chester. How are you? Oh, it's been a fun day at the carnival. I won the, I won the uh, cupcake eating contest again. That's always fun. Ooh. You participated in snail racing. Oh. I also participated in snail racing. You are I, I went I went backwards though. The adventurous one, my friend. I try. I never get to usually explore this place, so Well Welcome to the Dragonfly Rides. Yeah. You yeah, this oh sorry, go ahead. You see these very large gemstone colored dragonflies. There's obviously not a person with a weapon on it, but <laughs> Obviously, are you sure? Uh, Not yet. yet. <laughs> Not <Cool> yet. Perception. <laughs> it, hey, it's Kaylee's mother. You see, <laughs> uh, he holds out his hand and he says, "If you want to ride the dragonfly, it will cost one punch." Did someone just come here before us on their own? Yes. In fact. You see Northwind gesture over to the dragonflies. You see that there is a middle-aged dwarf with a bright blue beard currently uh, strapping himself into one of the harnesses on the back of the um, dragonflies. Nearby is Kettlestream. Oh. <laughs> You see, we thought it was... <laughs> and you see them casting a spell. <gasps> what? No. We gotta stop them! Lavelli's gonna call out their name to try and break their conversation. Concentration. Conversation, okay. concentration. Yeah. As you do, uh, you hear a squawk coming from Kettle Stream, and all of a sudden they jump back. Magic fizzles from their hands and it washes over the dragonfly. In a panic, the dragonfly suddenly kicks up and you see that this this dwarf, not completely secured in, begins to kind of hang halfway as this dragonfly just shoots right up into the sky and he starts screaming in absolute terror. How fast is that <gasps> dragonfly going? Uh, super fast. Uh, fast, enough, fast enough that you'll need another one in order to like, take uh, the fly more than 60 feet fly speed of 60 but probably dashing mm. but at least gonna just try to chase on her own just in case the guy falls before they can get there okay um so all of this is kind of happening at the same time so lavelli just begins to take off what does everyone else want to do here i'm gonna try and tackle kettle stream Okay. I was saying same. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone okay. just dogpiled Kettle Stream. We're going up to Kettle Stream. Okay. So um, I'm going to say, Vicaria, do this at advantage. Roll mm. me either athletics or acrobatics. Ooh. Acrobatics, no. Athletics, yes. Oh, oh. sorry. Roll once more. Oh, my bad. Athletics. First roll is a four. Ah, yes. A four and a two. Mm, <laughs> this makes sense. Okay. Mm. I think you trip. You just start, like, trying to go for it, and you trip. So I'm going to go ahead and give y'all one more chance. Calic or Chester? Or just falls you? onto a dragonfly. Chester, you do, have a, you do have a nat 20. <sighs> and an advantage. You could use either. I probably could. Um, What am I rolling? Am athletics. I also rolling athletics? It's my athletics. Or, or acrobatics, or just athletics? Or acrobatics. Okay. Acrobatics. I'm I'm a little I'm not bad at acrobatics. Um you know what? For this in this particular instance, I think I will probably use my advantage. Okay. okay. Uh go ahead and roll at advantage. Twenty. Very well, good. 
All right, Chester, tell me what happens here. Kalik does help you. Vicaria just totally fucking eats it. You actually fall into the water here. Oh, you slip no. on oh, a lily no. pad and you just poof, splash right in. No. Dress everywhere. She's gone no. swimming twice today. Oh, my books! My books! <laughs> my book eye starts freaking out. Um, so Chester will probably um, kind of see that happen first and sort of see like church uh, trip and go, oh no! And then like goes and looks over at Kaelic and said, grab her please, I'm gonna grab him. And just bolts it over and probably just kind of like hovers in the air a bit mm -hmm. and just kind of shoots off and then sort of just like, um, we'll just say tackle, we'll just say I tackle him. Okay, or, absolutely. Yeah. You wrap your arms around Kettle Stream, the scrap. Okay, like you're like kind of helping Chester and you see Ricaria just disappear. Oh, I have to go after my friend. Um so if I'm if I'm actually like over with Chester when I spot this, mm -hmm. uh Caleb will will pull the manacles off of his uh off of his pack and just shove them at Chester. Not even wait for Chester to, to grab a hold of it, just like let go and then go diving in after Ricaria. Awesome. Okay. As you do, Kalik, you see Ricaria has fallen in at like such an angle that she is very thrown off. She did not expect this to happen. So she's struggling to kind of like get her wits back about her. There's a moment where she's just briefly stunned. I think the weight of this sort of like danger that has suddenly washed over her, uh, it shakes you uh, to the to the point where perhaps you feel a bit off balance. You have drawn the balance card. I'm oh. gonna need you to half all of your spell slots if you have any and your hit points. So you lose half of your current hit points, not your max. It's not my fault. Me. <laughs> that is Kalik, yes. Okay. I have no spell slots. I only use mm -hmm. cantrips. So okay. that's good. Yes. But hit points. Got it. Yep. So you lose half of your current hit points. Wow. At least it's current and not maximum. And you are like already half health. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so you dive down into the water. Ricaria, you are stunned, but you see Kalik coming towards you. I'm like splashing around trying to get um I was, my bearings. I was, I was gonna say I, I almost think like you're a little bit panicking, so you're flailing. And I, I dive in and I get a hand like to the nose and it's just blood everywhere as I pull you out. It's a hard yeah. smack. <laughs> yeah. Rick. She's strong. She she yeah. is just bam right across bam. the face. Yeah, you the... you managed to pull Rick back up onto the lily pad, but your nose is just bleeding. Just cuffs up water onto this lily pad and says, Oh, oh gosh. Oh, thank you, Kalik. <coughs> oh. <You're> okay. <sighs> yeah, I feel like I just inhaled a fishbowl. It's not comfortable. Ugh, with the fish. And they look around. Wait, is Sir Lancelot still there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. God. Um, they're going to start looking at their books. To see if they're okay. Okay. Uh. Sir Lancelot's a girl. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> okay. Um, how many books do you have? Um, so she's about four. They're all in alphabetical order. Okay. One of them <gasps> is completely ruined. Probably like the A through D or something like that. Okay. The and other three, you can you'll, you can like. You know, air them dry out them. a little bit, dry them, dry they'll them. be fine. Dry. Yeah. She just kind of sits on the lily pad and goes through her books and realizes that one of them is completely ruined. And she just kind of stares there and says, Oh no, not again. Lavelli. Hey, Ricaria. Oh, yes. sorry. Hold on. Go ahead, Kaelic. Will you be okay, Ricaria? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I had a lot of work in there. It's like I lost the same thing twice in one day. 
Uh, I'll be okay. Can I have a hug? I don't know if I'm gonna be okay. Big, big hug. Oh. Yeah, um, wet, squishy hug. Akari starts wet, crying hug, <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Just starts sobbing. <clears throat> Excellent, uh, Lavelli. So you have taken off as hard and fast as you could. Uh, go ahead and roll me an athletics or acrobatics check. Acrobatics. Okay, a sixteen. Very good. So yeah, you managed to keep pace with the dragonfly. The dragonfly is shooting up and then begins to take off at an angle, you are more or less equal and parallel with it. Uh, you see that the dwarf is struggling to keep hold and they look like they're losing their grip. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to spend a key point to do Step of Wind and perform another dash to get closer. Okay. Yeah, you get to put your hands on them and whatever you like. All right, so she'll call out to them, let them know she's there, and try to just wrap around under their arms. Okay, yeah, you do. Um, Go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand. The dwarf seems to be stuck in the saddle in a very okay. dangerous way. Sleight of hand. Something I should be good at. Okay, 22. Very good. Yeah, you see that their boot is kind of wrapped up in one of the reins, and you free them. And you manage to uh, embrace the dwarf, and the dragonfly just takes off. The the dwarf like wraps their arms around your neck, and they're kind of like sobbing against you. Thank you so much. Oh, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll never die while I'm around. Does that mean I need to stay around you for the rest of my life? You've drawn the soldier card. <laughs> <laughs> she she laughs a bit at that and then says, "No, of course not. You'll always have this memory, so I'll always be with you." Oh, that that's nice. Can you put me put put put, put me down? Fast or slow? Slow. She'll take her time to go back down. Okay, excellent. Very good. Uh, as you kind of gently set this person down. And you see that a crowd has gathered and they begin clapping. Hey! Well, he tries to uh, puff out a bit to show them everything's all right, even though she is exhausted. Excellent. Uh, so meanwhile, all this is going on. Chester, you are wrangling Kettle Stream. You see that Kalik and Ricardi are gone. You are all by yourself with Kettle Stream here. What do you want to do? Um, I guess he'll kind of try and, um, I'm sure I've got some kind of rope or something on me, and I'll try to, like, wrap him up in some kind of, like, rope or something like that. I feel okay. like me holding onto him is only going to last for so long. Yeah, so. as you're trying to restrain Kettle Stream, uh, you feel a stroke of inspiration. You have drawn <laughs> the moon card. What Ooh. are you wishing for right now? That was your prize. That was my prize. That yeah. was your prize. Uh, what am I wishing for right now? Um, um, I guess I'm I'm sort of uh, I'm not. I'll need a second on it. You need a second? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah. So uh, we see Chester. will probably have Kettle Stream. Like in the background, uh, Ricaria and Kalik are embracing. They're wet. Lavelli, you touch down with the dwarf. What do you want to do? Uh, she's going to pat him on the head and say, maybe we stick to the ground a bit more. Thank you. No, can, go on. Can you hold my hand to the, to the land side? She, uh, nods slowly and puts her taloned hands in his hand. Okay, yeah. Uh, he basically just holds your hands all the way off the dock. Northwind kind of looms in and says, Thank you for taking care of one of our guests. That was very kind of you. I don't think anyone would have been having fun otherwise. Oh, that's right. 
and you. And he kind of turns over to Rikaria and Kalik embracing and says, Are you all right? I will be. But not right now. I should be fine. It's been a trying day. You see Northwind reach up into the boughs of his uh, hair, his branches, and he pulls out a small his flower. His canopy. And he pulls out a small flower and hands it very gently to Ricaria. Oh, thank you. I, I like this. This is a nice flower. Thank you. Uh, as soon as you grab it and like you kind of pull it close, it just poof, turns into oh. a gold piece. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you From, see North know, Wind kind of ago. swaying very gently and the leaves are rustling. I'll keep Wait. a hold of this forever. Don't we have something that lets us do prestidigitation? Yeah. I got a wand of prestidigitation. <gasps> Lavelli looks over at Kayla. Could. Couldn't that wand of yours repair her book? And unfortunately, Clean it up or not. dry it. The the I mean, I could dry the ones that are somewhat wet, but the ruined one, uh, prestidigitation will only last for an hour. After that, it would return to its ruined state. Well, it could let give her time to copy the uh, the pages. We could do that if you'd like to have a sit and uh, transfer over your records. Well, I, I don't want to keep all of you from having fun as well. I can I can just kind of sit to the side and maybe take some time to do it. I'll stay in one place so I don't get lost. She looks over at Chester and Kettlestream. Well, we seem to have caught our most uh, pressing issue. Two. You okay there, Chester? You just see him pondering something. I'm sure he's fine. Northwind says, I could keep you company, if you like, while you tend to your book. Thank you. That'd be really nice, actually. Is your friend Red still here? Hmm. You see them kind of shake their head a little and some leaves rustle down. You see a little red squirrel just pop their head down. What? What do you want? Remember your friend? She gestures over to Rikaria. She could use some company for a bit. Oh, hey. What's up there? Hi. I have to do some more drawing. Oh. oh. And you see him just kind of disappear for a second and then reappear, scampering down the arm and uh, the length of the arm of Northwind and kind of plops onto your shoulder. Oh. Hi. You may be surprised to know that I've got a degree in the fine arts. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm not the greatest artist, but I'm trying. That's all that matters. So... Let's have a look at what you've got. Okay. Kaelic, do you mind casting it so I can... Yeah, uh, if she's going to copy it over, um, he'll repair the book that that uh, was ruined. Okay. The A through D. Okay. So as that's going on, Chester. Uh, so you've got you got Kettlestream <sighs> in tow. Yeah. <laughs> what is Chester uh, thinking of right now? Um, Chester is probably wishing that was he with um Riley and uh Kalik when they were talking about what his motives were I feel like we had a talk about that but I don't remember uh y you've been filled in on that okay. uh, I believe you were not there but you we were filled in you you have the general gist of what of of that conversation all right. Well, I guess um, he would just, for once in his life, he'd wish he knew where he was and be able to 
The only wish I can really think of is turning him in, but I don't know what that would do. Like, I don't know if that would screw anything else up. Because I can't, I'm blinking. Okay, it, well, I mean, it doesn't have to be like some kind of world ending, world art altering thing. Um, no. So do you want perhaps, um, do you want to like try to resolve the issues with Kettle Stream? Yeah. Is is that kind of like along the line of what you want to do? Yeah, there's yeah. there's what you've learned about Diana. There's Kettle Stream. There's maybe riding the high of your cupcake victory. Yeah. So yeah, that's probably what I'd wish for then. Okay. Um. All right. Uh. So as you're kind of wrangling Kettle Stream, they seem to settle down quite a bit. Uh. You manage to secure your rope around them. You see that. Ricaria is currently uh, dealing with a book situation, and Lavelli is st standing there with Kalik and Northwind as well. Kettlestream just kind of quietly, sadly squawks at you as you move them towards the group. Oh. All under wraps, Chester. Yeah, <clears throat> it looks like I got him. It looks like I've got him pretty decent in the in the ropes, and hopefully he'll stay this time. Hmm. And Caleb will will, will look uh, Kettle Stream like square in the in the eye. They can't meet your gaze, and they just lower their head. And Northwind says, "Red, could you please go get Burly? We gave you." A smidgen of freedom last time. And look what you did with it. Do not think that you'll get the same treatment again. Kettlestream says nothing. Red gives a little salute and scampers away from Ricaria and disappears oh, into the car uh, carnival. Lavelli crouches down in front of Kettlestream. Okay. We said we would help you. Did you not trust us in that? Not trust. She copies the words that you say. She frowns with her eyes a bit and says, you know, we talked to the misters. It would have been nice if you could have been there, but we did ask on your behalf. You see her kind of perk up and she looks at you, curious. They told us that there were some things they just could not do. Again, you see a defeated look. Could not do. But they did say at the end of this, they could lead us to pat a path to find some of the things we lost. There may still be a chance to find what you're looking for. The things we lost. And you just kind of see a tear just running down her feathery cheek. And as as like the group here just kind of joins together, you see Red reappear leading Burly towards the Dragonfly rides. Burly strides right up and says to the group, I can handle thee miscreant from here. Mm. Much appreciated. Burly. Mm. Early. Yes. Please don't treat them too harshly. No harm stayed done. Of course, we will simply be escorting them out of the carnival for good. And she'll uh, look back towards Kettle Stream and mention, I have a friend over in the uh, big city nearby. If you mention my name, maybe they'll be able to help you. And she talks about the adventurer she had rescued. 
The merchant? The oh yeah. god, the shoe merchant? Was it a shoe? No, no, no. The uh Thieves Guild adventurer. Oh, okay. Right. Um at the job. <laughs> you yeah. have a job, Kettle. <laughs> you have a part-time job somewhere just waiting for you. I do. Um, okay. Uh, so you see Burly kind of nod towards you and begins to escort Kettlestream out of the carnival. And uh, that is the resolution for the Kettlestream issue. Uh, you see Northwind throws a few leaves up in the air, just trying to lighten the mood a little, and gestures to the dragonflies. Would you like to ride them? I would. I should get this done. Just in case. But Very good. Thank you. Of course. And Northwind will take the tickets of anyone who wants to ride them. Ellie's going to sit down and rest because she did very tiring flight. Yeah. Kalik, did you want to ride? Sure. Okay. And so Northwind will punch both Kalik and Chester's cards. And... Uh, for reference, Lavelli filled up her first ticket. Okay. Uh, so as the two of you make your way over to the dragonflies, you see that there are quite a few of them and they're all different colors. What color dragonfly do you want to ride, Kalik? Blue. Okay. Kalik. Blue. Chester, what color dragonfly do you want to ride? Is there a purple one? Yeah, purple. Yeah. Alright, uh, the two purple of you dragon. clamber up. Can I get acrobatics checks from both of you? Sorry, oh, no. animal handling. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so go ahead and so roll fast. that. Again. Sorry, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> oh. Um, that's fine, that's fine. So it's fine. Uh, Kalik with a 5 and Chester with a 12. Uh, so, Kalik, you are not so easily able to throw yourself up onto it. You see the animal is a bit unruly underneath you and kind of tosses a bit. What do you want to do? Do you want to say anything? Try anything? Um. I don't know. What do I want to do? And Chester, you get on no problem. I think this is probably not your first time riding the dragonflies. No. You know the trick. The trick is to pat them on the head first. He is friends with Northwind. Yeah. True. Northwind keeps me in all the time. And you do see Kalik struggling. <laughs> oh, Kalik. Um, is there a way I could help Kalik? You could tell him the secret. All right, I'm telling you the <laughs> secret yourself. there. Kalik. Oh. Pat it on its head. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Um, my my training, as it were, being focused more on adventuring. You typically don't have to deal with animals unless you're uh, contracted to deal with the animals. If you know what I mean. Uh, yes, I. I clambering on one is not. Uh, it's not really part of what 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 I was taught. Well, every every animal's different. These ones just like hit packs. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> what are you gonna do with these animals? <laughs> uh, so as the two of you clamber up, you drop yourselves into the harnesses, and we see the dragonflies slowly beginning to take off. Not startled by some magical spell. It is quite a smooth ascension. Uh, they begin to rise up, 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 and you can see them going over the carnival here. They begin to trace lazy eight shapes of eight up in the air, and you can see the entire carnival below. You see fireworks going off here. You see people wandering the streets full of mirth. And as the feet left, as the screen slowly fades to black, I think that's where we're going to end the session for tonight. However. Yeah. However. However. Uh, hi. <laughs> Surely see, there's no more cards left. We see the credits scroll, right? And then there's suddenly an extra scene. 
We see Mr. Witch and Mr. Light speaking to each other in hushed tones in the back of their caravan. One of them says, I have quite a suspicion that I know who exactly will be the Witch Light monarch. Don't you? Mr. Witch leans back and rubs at his chin. Perhaps. What does your weather vane tell you? And uh, we see Mr. Witch, Mr. Light, lift up the weather vane, and in the central gem, we see a face. One of you has drawn the throne card. One of you mm. will be the Witch Light Monarch. Oh my. But that's for next time. The screen fades to black, but we're not done yet. Oh. We see we see a few people in the shadows here. One of them is very tall and muscular, speaking to someone that we can't quite see. I need you to keep a close eye on her. I don't know what she's got in mind, what brought her here, but I don't want her to know quite yet what we've got in store for her. Stay close, if you can. She is the wily one, a free spirit meant to stay untamed. And Fine dips his head and says, I will try my best, mistress. <laughs> You have drawn the rogue card. NPCs are working against you, baby. I don't take responsibility for that. How dare you? I blame Emma. Yeah, that one is <laughs> True, Emma did do a card. And we yeah. see one final scene here. Kalik, where are your parents right now? Um, I would say, uh, so what, what time of night is this supposed to be? We are in the dead of twilight. Okay. Um, they are probably just arriving home at their manor from some sort of gala event, both dressed very finely and elegantly. Um, and, uh, just casual chatter about what a nice night it was mm -hmm. uh you s we see your mother gesturing to one of the servants saying draw a bath we will like to rest and uh ease our bones into comfort and uh we see the servant bow and fade away and as your parents in the sanctuary of their home begin to undress and unwind from this very elaborate event that they had been in. The camera slowly pulls away and we see only silhouettes in a window. There's a crash. The sound of swords grinding against one another. The scream of someone in pain. <laughs> The wet slice of meat, the dull thud of a body. You have drawn the flames card. Um, no. A supernatural force is working against you, specifically your family. One of the bodies left behind is going to be someone important to you and one of the bodies that <laughs> is the other is no longer there you have drawn the donjon card <gasps> something happens to someone you know and they become trapped <gasps> one of them is taken prisoner oh There's <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end this session for today and there's his character arc, everyone. Yay. Where to go, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you killed always parents. your cards. 
<laughs> hey, Kill his I've, parents! I've given you such a plot line right now. Well, I True. mean, like... Oh. Killed a parent, okay? Or, I mean, you know, could be gravely wounded. Don't have to necessarily be dead. <laughs> look, but we look, will... We'll find out another time. could have been your favorite time. servant. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they took down... I don't know. Okay. No. Terrible things happened. We all know that. Terrible things happened. Terrible, Terrible things, things happened. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, everyone. Thank you so much for all of the support, all of the cards. Uh, we're gonna oh, go around oh, no. and tell. Hi, oh. welcome, oh. Raiders. Oh, no. Raiders. Hello, Raiders. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much for the love, Guild Superior. Thank you. You have amazing timing. Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh no. Well, you get to hear about everyone's favorite parts. Right. As right. we do our outros. Let's start with not me. All right. Let's start with Matihi. Tell us who you are, where oh. we can find you, and what your favorite part of today's session was. Yes. Hello. I'm dropping my voice now because I'm no longer Akaria. Hi. I'm Matihi. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie Matihi, and very rarely on my own Twitch at Matihi, but I'm hoping to maybe start doing things again now that I have a certain png tuber um you can find me here every other wednesday so not next wednesday maybe the next i don't know christmas is weird we'll find out um but you find me here playing Ricaria, who is a pet snake named sir lancelot sir lancelot has um gone to party with my cat anders currently so they're busy they're you know indisposed um you can also find me over on emma panada's channel i'm there every other friday playing the avatar legends game I don't think we have a game this Friday, maybe next Friday, but also Christmas. So, you know, but you can also find me uh, on Tuesdays. I'm over on Emma Panada's channel running Curse of Lady Strad, um, where I, of course, GM. I GM a plethora of various NPCs like Jimothy, who's taken over my screen. So if you want to pop in and say hi, you totally can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. Jimothy is so fucking cute. Yes. Oh my god. That's me. Wow. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you say your favorite part? Oh no, I didn't. Let me let me get rid of Jimothy. Okay. Sorry, Jimothy. Um, so my favorite part, I think that oh god. Um hot centaur, uh also flirting with Burley. Um always absolutely wonderful and i think just like i didn't like i was really excited to like perform as well that was a lot of fun doing like the falling and everyone working together to kind of make this big production and us uh winning and me leveling so that was mine yeah got hit you hit us with that that comet card thanks you me gained a whole level very nice thank you thank you uh, Geek Dice, unfortunately, was not able to join us here today. Uh, he was feeling under the weather, but he will be back next time. Uh, next, we've got B Street Homes. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Matthew, or you'll find me most places as B Street Homes. Um, my big thing on the uh, on the web is Monday nights at 10. Uh, Jacob and I do a stream on YouTube talking about nerdy news, which is tons of fun. We've been doing it for years. We'd love it if you guys joined us. Um, I, I'm sure at some point I had a favorite moment from tonight and a lot of tonight has just exited my brain. <laughs> After that ending? Oh my God. God. Oh um, man. Like, I, I, I will say I, I, I did enjoy, um, from like, a uh, uh, Calyx story side. I did enjoy him being the one person who wasn't in the performance because that is very much like the kind of like center of attention thing he'd love to do. And like, it was kind of a nice story thing of him being like grumpy off to the side. Like I could be doing that, but no, <laughs> I'm watching people. Like, With my I, I think that was a good moment for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a bit of a, a doozy there towards the end. Uh, yeah, as soon as I saw these combination of cards, I was like, fuck yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna, do some We're gonna fuck shit, shit up. Yeah, 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 yeah. The worst, the worst part is that like he's gonna keep going. Like, oh, these are my par you know, my parents. You've probably heard of them. Here's their names. At some point, someone's gonna be like, "You didn't oh. hear?" <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's traumatic. 
Ooh, juicy. I love it. Thank you so much. And uh, nobody blamed anyone. <laughs> Next, we've got Zombie. Hello, I am Jacob. I am Zombie. I am Z. I am whatever those two names that call me. I am the lore keeper, clip master. I probably do too many clips, but that's up to your own discretion. Um, you can find me, like Matthew said, every other every, every Monday uh, at eight or ten PM Eastern with the Knights of Nirvana stuff. It's really fun. Um, and then next week, uh, I will be here with the the Secret Assault Marsh game. With unfortunately, Mr. Jake Dice, as, as mentioned, is not feeling all that well. Hopefully, he'll feel well for the next session. Best wishes to him. Probably my favorite part of this whole whole thing there's two i guess i have two one is the fact that i won the cupcake competition i don't remember a time where any of my characters have won anything so <laughs> uh i'm just like yay i won a, i won a competition and i'm happy about that and then the other one was i got to try out my um performance voice i've been trying to do sort of kind of some performance voice with chester considering he was a performer so i was like i'm gonna try it and i think it went off pretty okay i think um, that went really well yeah it went oh, great you. Thank you. I, I've been, I've been practicing a little. Um. So yeah, and then you'll you'll find me in Stella's uh, Discord, Robo's Discord. Also here, living. On, I just I just live here. I just I just live. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we've got Vertigo. Hello, I'm Vertigo Cross. I like to play games on Twitch either by myself or with my friends like Stella and Maddie over here. Uh, you can either catch me throughout the week whenever I have free time playing video games, usually Dead by Daylight, or on Mondays playing with Stella from Mixed Monday Madness, and every other Wednesday over here trying to be the moral compass of the group. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, as for my favorite part, it was probably uh, Kalik eating shit on stilts and falling into the circus tent. <laughs> That was good. Yeah. yeah. And drawing everyone's intent attention. <laughs> All right. Oh. Yeah. You know what? That was really funny. Just the whole like, him was like, I'm, it's cool. It's fun. Everything's fine. <laughs> that was pretty good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stella Luna. If this is the first time that we're meeting, please consider giving us a follow. That's a free way you can support our content. We like to play Dungeons and Dragons and other TTRPGs here. If you have ever wanted to be like, hey, I see cool people on the screen. I want to do what they're doing. All you have to do is hop into our Discord. We run a couple of different games every month and uh, we're a learning community. We want to teach you how to play, um, how to run games, how to stream games, all that good stuff. Uh, we just want to help people get set up for success and throw dice because that's the most fun thing to do and role playing and we love it. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so I will be I will be back here on Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern time for Unbound. Unbound is my passion project where we go around slaying gods and smooching hot NPCs. So if that kind of chaotic queer vibe is your sort of thing, that's the thing that I do every Friday night. Um, other than that, I'll be back on Monday. We're going to be playing video games with V here. V's my best friend. And then next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, will be our other campaign, Secrets of Salt Marsh. If you want to see more of The Wild Beyond the Witch Site, we will be back the Wednesday after on the 29th. Thank you. Do you also have a uh, strict yeah. saving on Monday? Yes. Yeah. Hi. I am part of a group that got to play Strixhaven early. If you want to see what Strixhaven I got, Wizards of the Coast sent me books. Let me show you these awesome mm -hmm. books. If you yeah. want to see some of this content, you can head over to Runaway Robots channel where I play Sorry who is a Deerkin Barbarian for the Lorehold College. Uh, it's basically like wizard school, magic school. It's really fun. You should come check it out. That is at 3 p.m. on Monday. <sighs> yes. Uh, thank you to our Patreons. Thank you so much. Everyone on the screen that you see here is responsible for all of the super dope shit that we do. And man, thank you. Uh, Jake for keeping me on my plugs. Uh, if you want to hire me as a GM, there's a link there. But uh, we're gonna go find I, someone to raid. Yep. I, 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 as someone who's played at this table for at least a couple months with both games, I highly recommend Stella as your DM. Let me tell you right now, best investment of your money you'll ever make. 
Thanks. You're so nice. What was your favorite part, Stella? Oh, yeah, yeah. Stella. Ooh, um. Did you enjoy killing Kaylee's parents? No. I did. That was <laughs> fun. Um, I don't know. I think my favorite part was just seeing all of these different cards and trying to figure out what the fuck to do with all of them. Uh, especially because like we got them all at once and I was trying to pepper them in and just kind of flavor things as we were going. Um, I'm just really enjoying the party. The dynamic is really sweet. I like that everyone is like really cares about each other and um, we seem pretty tight knit. I'm really glad that y'all followed through and went to the feasting orchard and met Eliwick. Uh, they're a cool character. We'll see more of them in the future. But um, yeah, Chester winning the the cake eating contest that was just it just made sense. Like can't with canon and so good. It was real good. I love it. And now you just have a cupcake of invisibility in your pocket, just yeah. whenever you, know. you want. <laughs> can he see the cupcake? Yeah, you can. Oh yeah, and then you got a magic item. Someone just threw a magic item at you. Yeah, I got a doll that can talk to me. Yeah, it's a Yeti. Oh, there you go. Dress. Oh, wow. Yeti. Yep. <laughs> Yeti. With the props. Wow. <laughs> props. I'm master props. of props. Mercaria yeah. stole your doll. Uh, it's mine now. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Please join me in this raid. We're going to go raid over to that D'Angelo. Yeah. Heck yeah. We love D'Angelo. Yeah, we love D'Angelo. We, we love D'Angelo so much. They're so awesome. Please get your Corgi emotes ready if you have them. If not, get your most heckin' adorable, sweetest emotes ready, and we're gonna go fill up their chat with love. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye.